Hello, folks. Today's episode is brought to you by CarParts.com. CarParts.com is the smarter way to shop for auto parts. Their fast, mobile-friendly experience makes it easy to shop for the parts you need when you need them. Just enter the year, make, and model of your vehicle, start shopping, and start saving. It is that simple. I needed a bunch of stuff for my car. It always needs a little bit of TLC, and I was on like an improvement kick, and it was really easy to find tail lights, cup holders, power steering lines, all these things I wanted to uh, to upgrade uh, on carparts.com. That's right, we love them and you will too. Carparts.com stocks their own inventory, cutting out the middleman and passing the savings on to you. Whether you've been in a collision, working on your project car, or need to catch up on maintenance, visit carparts.com slash the smoking tire for 10% off of $100 or more on select brands. Get the right parts right now at carparts.com. You know what you can't get at carparts.com? Meat. That's but true. You can get it at butcherbox.com. And meal prepping, although difficult, is now made easier with ButcherBox. They've got a subscription service that takes the guesswork out of finding high quality meat. ButcherBox sources their meat from partners with the highest standards for quality. No more searching the grocery store for 100% grass fed beef, free range organic chicken, wild caught seafood, and more. Their sourcing decisions are made holistically, keeping the farmer, the planet, the animal, and your family in mind. I just got some ribeyes from ButcherBox, and I went with the reverse sear, which I can do using actually my toaster oven. I have like one of those like kind of, I guess it's like a higher end toaster oven that can also do oveny things, mm-hmm. and you just set it 190 for about an hour and a half until your internal temperature is at like 125. Sear it on a couple a couple minutes aside, and what you get is a sort of it's like a faking of dry aging. It's not quite as as like nutty and delicious as if it was totally dry aged, but by doing the reverse sear in the oven, it makes those ribeyes have that nice nutty flavor, and then it really absorb absorbs all the butter in the pan, mm. and it is d. De- Lightful, and I love Butcher Box because it just like I, when it shows up, I throw that meat in the freezer, and then even like I can just take it out when I, at, around lunchtime, it's ready to go at dinner. I don't have to go digging through meat at the store, and it is excellent. They save time, save money. It's great. And uh, let's see, every month ButcherBox will ship a curated selection of high-quality meat right to your home, free shipping in the continental U.S., and each box will contain between 8 and 14 pounds of meat, depending on your box, enough for up to 24 individual meals. Um, Get this. This is awesome. Here's a chance to never have to shop for ground beef again. That's right. ButcherBox is giving new members free ground beef for life. You sign up at butcherbox.com slash tire, and every order you do with ButcherBox, you get free ground beef, two pounds in every order for the life of your membership. That's awesome. That's free meat for life. Go to butcherbox.com slash tire to claim this deal. Butcherbox.com slash tire, free ground beef for the life of your membership. It's a hell of a deal, folks. Who doesn't like free meat? Vegans, probably. If you're not a vegan... Butcher Box's free ground beef for life deal at butcherbox.com slash tire is uh, pretty excellent. How about Squarespace? My websites, both of them, thesmokingtire.com and wccs.com are powered by Squarespace. I love Squarespace because I don't have a degree in web design. I don't know anything about HTML or what any of those other like programming languages. I just know how to like click and drag things, and then I know how to type some things. And those are the only skills you need to make a website with Squarespace. Whether you're talking about promoting your business, uh, a blog, a, a resume type of uh, type of deal, uh, whatever it is you need a website for, Squarespace makes it super easy. You can integrate social media. You can integrate multimedia. You can have multiple different contributors. You could run a whole, like a whole business with like different people writing for that website. Um, it just it's so easy. You the layouts they've got like all of these pre-made like 
you know, stylish looking, clean layouts, or you can design your own from scratch. You can make it personal, or you can make it simple. Actually, they're not one or the other. You can do both. It's simple and it can be personal. Uh, Squarespace has helped me create professional quality websites over and over, and the process is just super, super easy. Head over to squarespace.com uh, for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, Go to squarespace.com slash tire to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Used to be that you had to go somewhere else to buy your domain and then use something like a Squarespace to make the physical website. Squarespace now, you can do all of that in one place. Buy your domain, get your website up, host it, keep it all there in one place, change it, update it every single day, every time you're offering a new service or have something to change or make it so it kind of already updates. Like the smokingtire.com, all our social media stuff, all our podcasts, all our videos, they just populate there right away. It's very, very easy with Squarespace. So go to squarespace.com slash tire to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Last but not least, you should never compromise when it comes to protecting your car. That's why we've got the Blackview DR900X Plus Series dash cams. Uh, I love these dash cams. The Blackview DR900X Plus model. It's got a new and improved 4K ultra high resolution front camera and a newer Sony Starvis sensor on the rear camera. So you can be sure you will capture all the important details both during the day and at night. As a screenless, compact camera that hides behind your rearview mirror, the Blackview is managed exclusively from the Blackview mobile app. With Blackview seamless pairing, connect the Blackview app is a breeze. No need to enter pesky passwords anymore. Just wave your hand near the camera to confirm it's you, and then the app will let you browse recorded videos, change settings, or connect your dash cam to the cloud effortlessly. When you're away from your car, we've got built-in voltage monitoring, so you can leave your car protected by Blackview's parking mode without fear of draining your car's battery. And thanks to the optional LTE connectivity module, Blackview DR900X Plus Series dash cam keeps you always connected to your car from anywhere. This means you can receive impact notifications on your mobile, check on your car with remote live view, and rest easy know, knowing that live event upload saves impact footage in real time to the cloud, including the all-important five-second pre-impact buffer. The new mobile hotspot function allows you to turn your LTE-connected dash cam into a Wi-Fi hotspot for up to five devices, and there's an optional rear camera, which you can get now or add later. So go to blackview.com slash TST, B-L-A-C-K-V-U-E dot com slash TST, and use the promo code TIRE to get 10% off any Blackview dash cam with free shipping for orders over $200. That's blackview.com slash TST. Promo code TIRE gets you 10% off any Blackview dash cam and free shipping for orders over $200. That's Blackview's DR900X Plus Series. Okay, folks, on today's episode, our pal Tony Caroga is in studio. He has just been promoted. He is now the editor-in-chief of Car and Driver Magazine. That is, that is a business card that one day... I would like to have. Editor-in-chief of a car magazine that you grew up reading is pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, we talk about the lightning lap, which is in this year's issue of Car and Driver, go through some of the results of that. We talk about some of his favorite uh, supercars and sports cars of the, uh, the last few months. We talk about whether or not he thinks it's okay that uh, cars have gotten really, really fast and in some cases uh, a little more digital and less connected. We talk about what it's like to test a Bugatti Chiron on, a, on the Hyundai Proving Grounds and a whole lot more. Tony Caroga, editor-in-chief of Car and Driver on the Smoke and Tire podcast. Um, and, you know, I, I'm sure because you've seen it fucking everywhere, uh, the the Porsche I ordered is fucking lost at sea. Yes, I'm very excited Which, to hear about you know, that. Well, it's it's that that's the whole story. Wait, it's what one did you order. I don't know what you Boxer ordered. Spider. Oh wow. Okay. But there's one. That's there's that's that's the entire story. It's one okay. sentence. Car, boat, fire, adrift. Like that's the entire story. <laughs> Paint to sample. 
Uh, no, Frozen Berry Metallic, which Ooh. is a production color. The, oh, the best production color. Very cool. Um, so, but because I, I guess I was the first person to, to like tweet about it, to say that like my car was on the fucking boat. Right. Um, this morning, when I, I went up on the, uh, the hill this morning to film that yellow car outside, that NSX, and the Golf R that we have, came back down off the hill, and I had 30, 35 requests from local news reporters oh, yeah. from all over yeah, the yeah, fucking yeah. world. And I wrote like a three sentence like statement and I just control C, control V, control C, control V, control C, control. So you are going to see the most boring series of news articles with just ba that have nothing to say. Right. And well, what uh, are you going to say? Nothing. And also you can't complain because there's no more first world problem. No, than I'm not losing I, your Porsche at sea. Not yeah. complaining. Yeah. I mean, no, I know. I know. You, I said, you, you know, you I said, you know, I'm, even it's you mildly frustrating, right. but like. They're gonna. They'll, they'll make they'll, another one. They'll, they'll make another yeah. one, and nobody got hurt. And right. you know, the environment. Obviously, EVs are great for the environment. <laughs> because I don't know about you, but I know a lithium fire when I see one. Where Where is it in the Atlantic? Uh, off of the Azores. It was uh, like two th uh, two thirds of the way to Europe if you left Jersey. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Or or one third, or one of, the third way of the way to here. Jersey. <laughs> well, I'm more of a glass half full kind of person. Yeah. Oh, these are the most recent photos. These photos are from today. Yeah. I'm gonna guess there are no vehicular survivors. No, and I don't bit. think insurance would allow anybody to sell anything no. that was on that boat anyway. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, half half of the boat we're looking at is melted. Yeah. Like windows and walls are melted off, and the inside is just covered in. Right. I don't know, foam, maybe? Right. If it's not the fire, it's the mel molten lithium. If it's not the molten lithium, it's the smoke. And if it's right. not the smoke, it's the seawater. Exactly. <laughs> it's not, yeah. exactly. It's not gone the well. The seawater that was dumped on them. On the Felicity Ace. That's the Felicity Ace. The, That's Cougar, the, the, the Cougar Ace was the one about 15 years ago, 16 yeah. years ago with the Mazdas that overturned. Yeah. yeah. And, and, yeah. I, and in 2019, yeah. uh, uh, a boat dunked a few GT2 RSs in the fucking drink, and they had to restart production to build them. <laughs> um, we wanted to send one of our contributors on a boat from uh, from Japan. Really? Yeah, just put him on the boat. He lives there for however long it takes to get to the to the Dude, West Coast. You know, that's actually That'd kind of interesting. Yeah, I yeah. mean, embedded embedded journalist on yeah. the, on the boat to see what, who these crazy sailors are, like, yeah. what it's like, and because they kind of live on the boat. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean, that's their job. That's yeah. a, it's like a navy type job. You just live on the boat. Yeah. yeah. Well, when I flew, I did that thing with Porsche when they we did it. We you know because Porsche North America has to buy their press cars from Porsche Germany. So they made a trip out of that. We did European delivery of the North American 992 press fleet. Right. It was like four journalists. We went to Stuttgart, got the cars, drove oh. them to Leipzig, and flew them on a cargo That's plane. That's right. I, I read about that. And yeah. by far the most interesting thing was the guy who lived on the plane. <laughs> the guy who lived on the plane was like... The comic book guy from The Simpsons. Wow. Right. He looked like that guy. But now, was he the pilot, too? No, no, no. no he not just the lived pilot. on the plane. He was the mechanic. Oh, He okay. was a live-on a, a technician of some kind. Right. And he had a bunk. You know, he had, a like, a, 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 a closet of sorts. Um, and he had, like, a fucking lazy boy recliner, <laughs> like a full recliner. I remember seeing that photo. I remember the seeing full that photo. Recliner, yes. And he had a gaming set, a full, like, the rest of us slept for this flight. <laughs> this dude was fucking, like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like, role play, like, 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 oh, like, like MMORPG. Uh, I don't know like what the first, acronym is, yes, but like, the, the World of Warcraft or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, he was a nice guy, but I was like, let me get this straight. You live on this 747? Was he He's American? Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, he was American. Yeah. Who, who did, who, what? It was a was it Kalita? It was a Kalita oh, DHL flight. Okay. flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was wild. <laughs> I was like, that was fucking crazy. <laughs> what was what kind of what was the equipment? Was it a seven forty seven? Yeah, and the, you're only the upstairs former first class cabin. Right, right. Was like remotely furnished, right, and even right. then only kind of half so. And if you walked to the back of it, there was just a door that was just like into the open cargo bay. So what, did you have like a sleeping bag? 
No, no, I had a, I had a, I had a first class seat that was installed in 1977. Oh, okay, right, I got you. So it was like comfortable and kind of nicely broken in, but like you didn't want to touch anything. No, I was gonna say like, what did that smell like? <laughs> it was like OG. <laughs> it was OG, but like. <laughs> It was neat. You know, should have was... brought a sheet just to put over. <laughs> Bro, I had a full, I had like, you know, a sweatshirt and sweatpants and and I like pulled my sleeves like over my, I was like, I'm not, not, not touching anything. <laughs> yeah, it was fucking grimy. It was <laughs> grimy. But it was like, kind of, it was kind of all right. Right. Yeah, it was cool. I mean, it was a, a, a neat experience. I'm yeah. certainly not complaining at all. It was very fucking no, that's cool. cool. That's and cool. the, you know, getting to drive the same car. On two continents that was a totally happen. unique yeah. experience. Yeah, it's like yeah. some gumball. Oh right, because you guys did Tale of the Dragon after. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We did I Autobahn read, read and yeah. Tale of the Dragon in the yeah. same car. Yeah, two days apart. It yeah, was pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it was really cool. But like, it was weird. That's a good idea. But that's the boat thing trip. sounds cool. Like I would. It, you, I think it takes a. You long run time, a magazine though. now. Fucking send someone on the boat. Maybe we will pack a lunch, bitch. Fuck out there. There's a great book called The Ridiculous Race about these two. Uh, TV writers who had like a three month break so they literally raced each other around the world but they couldn't use planes or uh, rented cars and one guy went west and he took like a cargo ship he did what you're talking about he's like you just pay a really low amount you eat with the crew yeah. right, and you just sit there and like read books and just go across the ocean well That's that would knock great. down the per diem I'm it sure <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah where are you going to spend it they're just <laughs> eating gruel on the boat and you know Someone on that boat is like a great, you know, Vietnamese food cook or something. That's probably right? true. That's probably yeah. true. And then he's like the most valuable person on right. that ship. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, yeah. So anyway, the car's gone. <laughs> For sure. Along with a lot of other cars. Yeah. Like a lot of other cars. Wow. Some way more expensive ones than mine. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. And super exclusive cars, paint to sample yeah, stuff. Definitely. All at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Salvage title, bro. I know what I have. Low miles. <laughs> some Craig's people on people. Twitter did send uh, some nice, some good license plate suggestions. So when I when I finally get get my car, did you consider doing a paint to sample Cassis car? So they have paint to sample, but that's not real. Like they have like approved paint to sample, right. right? So there's yeah. like a hundred paint approved paint to sample right. colors, of which Cassis is not one. Oh, I didn't know that. No, okay. they it. then have. PTS plus right which is anything you can imagine right and it's 13 or fourteen thousand dollars to do a boxster in that and the reason it's so expensive is because they paint a practice car <laughs> seriously because the bodies are mixed materials Wow and so they want to make sure that that it looks right on all the different panels so they paint a practice car so that's why PTS plus is, is is so much more expensive. more expensive. No, excuse me. Regular PTS is thirteen five. PTS plus is twenty two grand. Okay, so it's almost double. Yeah, it's wow. double because they paint two cars. Got it. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, that but doesn't seem like a great. Investment. When I saw that they added frozen berry metallic, which is like a modern cassis, kind it's it's close. It's it was not like exact. that nine six four color, right? No, it's the Tycon color. It's it was new for Tycon. Oh, it was new the for Tycon. Tycon press got cars it. were that color. Got it. Got it. And uh, I was like, oh, and I was like. It's a production. It's a no charge color, or maybe it's like a thousand right, like or whatever. Something. It's the metallic. It's up a charge, regular, yeah. yeah. And so I was like, I bet I can get this, and it'll be almost unique because nobody that's fucking spending this kind of money on a car is going to get pink. <laughs> so no, absolutely. There's very not. few. I've seen two. I've seen two other ones. One in Europe is a, a Cayman, and then a, a Boxster here. Uh, in Florida that was done in, in um, it's so anyway did you get a manual or an yeah, automatic manual. Yeah, yeah, manual. yeah and it, it, it's got some other cool little stuff on it but it's it's yeah it's gonna be amazing it had eventually it had, had. <laughs> it had it will have again <laughs> it will have again and um, yeah no they called me and they were like uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna have to build you another one of course and they go you you want to change anything? Because now, now's your option. I was like, I don't even know if I like what I got. <laughs> I said, no, to build build the car I ordered, please, and and that's all that's all that there really is. But it's unfortunate. But you know, maybe that's the universe telling you that that's not the right color. One person, <laughs> one person in a very backhand. I've gotten. I think it's cool. I've gotten I a number are, of I think incredibly backhanded compliments recently. Right. Okay. <laughs> I got this one guy the other day went. Just consider it a sign, man. That color was fucking stupid. Right. And I was like, what? 
like what you actually got off your couch to write me that email like a stranger <laughs> not my friend like a total stranger and another guy was like um Oh man, frozen berry. Oh man, I totally forgive you for thinking about painting. Oh no, you're totally redeemed for considering painting a cassis car. I go, I need redemption for thinking about something that I didn't do. And the guy got pissy and he was like, I'm trying to give you a compliment, man. I was like, that's not uh, how you, you give to, someone. You need a, to work on that. There's been a bunch of these where it's like, Someone who thinks they're giving you a compliment and they're like, you know, I used to think you were a fucking cockbag, but now I think you're cool. <laughs> it's like you could drop the whole first half of that and just just leave the second part. And right. I'd be like, oh, thank you. Nobody needs to hear that first part. You don't part. need to yeah, hear the first part. That's the internal <laughs> part that you keep inside. Like, Can you imagine like, if, who, if you met a musician or someone whose shit you kind of like and go, you know, I used to think you were a piece of shit, but now I'm into <laughs> you. Right. Yeah, totally. Who would say that to somebody and then think they were giving them yeah. a compliment? And think that they wanted to continue the conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's well, they're, they're saying my opinion is so valuable that you won me over. And you I want need to, to hear you all that. of Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, keep the fucking right. first part to yourself. I don't care if yeah, you used to exactly. think I suck. No, it's or not you, relevant. <laughs> I don't care if you think I need to redeem myself <laughs> for thinking about, about changing the color yes. of a car that I didn't ultimately change. <laughs> You sold that car, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's having fun down in Florida. People keep tagging me in pictures of it on Instagram. The oh, dude, okay. It gets around. The dude's driving it. Good for him. Good. He's enjoying it. Good. Um, anyway, let's talk about you. Okay. Editor-in-chief. Yeah. How's that feel? It's crazy. Is Lifelong it? dream. The big desk? Yeah, I Corner might. Office? If I start talking about it too much, I might get emotional. Really? It's, yeah, it's no, it's G. a big deal. I mean, it is a big I mean, deal. Uh, I'm the 19th. In the history of it. No. Oh. Um, how long did it take you to think about how many there were before you? Uh, well, I was writing my editor's column this week, oh, okay. and I, I looked up Eddie's, and then I looked up um, Sharon's, and oh, okay. I was like, oh, okay. I, and they, the numbers were in there. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's, I mean, when I was six, I walked into a grocery store and picked up a car and driver, and uh, ever since then, I've yeah. wanted to work there. Yeah. And, I, and Chubba hired me 18 years ago after I was at Automobile. Um, for a couple of years and it's been a crazy ride. Like I've met so many of my heroes. I've gotten to work with so many cool people in the industry and it's just, I mean, it's a life, it's literally a lifelong dream come true. And, uh, yeah, now it's happening and, but I got to move to Michigan, but that's <laughs> the, uh, you know, and I love living in Los All Angeles. All that glitters is not gold. Yes. I absolutely <laughs> love living here. Um, I think this Can't is just... Can't you, as editor, move move the magazine to you? <laughs> I mean... I wish it were that easy, Matt. Is it not? Yeah, I wish, not? It, I wish it were. No, that's unfortunate. Um, but, but yes. This is a nom, there are rules? Yes. Hmm. So, I see. But, you know, um, there's still plenty of opportunity to come out here. I have a house out here, which I'm going to hang on to and okay. rent it and maybe in the short term come back a little bit to sort of, you know, make sure I don't get too sad when there's no sun. I'll watch it yeah. for you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you got to leave a For car free. here with us, you know. That's Hold fine. On. I can do that. I've it's got. An, it's Ann Arbor, yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll probably go to move to Ann Arbor uh, maybe in April, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, well, then we'll start to kick ass. Nice. Do you have like big plans? Um. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, did you get did you get the job because of a big plan? Not necessarily. Or was just like it's your turn, Tony. Yeah. It might have been a little of both. Yeah. Um. I mean, I feel like, as such a fan of Car and Driver for so many years, I sort of get what makes us good and what makes us fun, and that, that's it. That's exactly it. Like, there should be like fun in every sing every single thing that we like. Um, the writing should be of the top quality. You know, the best, most entertaining writers we can find. Um, first person, like experiential stuff, like sitting on a cruise or sitting on a, a ship going across the Pacific. That is a good one. I would, I would do uh, that, that kind one. of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like that sort of like stuff that has its roots in gonzo journalism is sort of what made Car and Driver great. Mm. And I want to return to that. And I want to figure out how to make that happen in 2022. And then we'll keep, you know, testing and our product expertise and, you know, engineering know-how will be there for the experts and the enthusiasts. And, and then online, we'll continue to feed the in-market shoppers that are shopping for a car. And we now have Carlos Lago on board, who's That's a good one. starting the video push. And yeah, so I mean, a lot of stuff is happening. It's a great time. 
I'm looking forward to it. We're going to start filling, hopefully start filling the ranks um, in Michigan with some people. Uh, but we've made a lot of great hires recently, like Dan Edmonds. Um, Dan's great. Dan's like awesome. Dan Brilliant yeah. guy. Great driver. He's going to be doing some of the testing duties that I was doing out here. Mm -hmm. uh, we hired Alana Scherer, um, who's fantastic, creative, great writer. <laughs> How does does she? How many jobs does she have right now? Well, yeah. that's her full the, her full time job is with us. Okay. All Why? Right, what good. else is she doing? <laughs> oh, uh, I mean, she always she always uh, seems to be doing know. a lot of everything. Yes, I mean, because she loves cars yeah. and she's just so into it, and she loves people and and storytelling, and that's what she's great at. And um, and then um, yeah, and then on the editing side, we hired back Joe Lorio, who's a long time. I mean, he was oh, my yeah. first editor at Automobile Magazine twenty two years ago, and now I get to work with him again, and he's. Uh, He's making sure the writing quality is of top notch, and yeah. So um, the the some of the players are in place, and I'm looking forward to figuring things out going forward too. That's awesome. That's yeah, it's great. I'm so happy for you. I mean, it's like a ridiculous promotion. It yeah, rules. yeah, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, you have to design your own business card. Do something really awesome. <laughs> Business card. Do no one have business cards anymore? <laughs> I would drop a business card on the desk if I should said editor in chief. <laughs> Fucking have business cards just just to show people that it was legit. Well, yeah. I mean, I I can't remember the last time I gave out a business card though. But I will. I, I, I can't either. I have them and I don't give them. To I mean, anybody, they, they but basically I still like having they're on them. my luggage. That's the <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. That's where they go, and yeah. that's still pretty baller. Yeah, I mean, the if luggage, somebody sees yeah, that, the luggage tag is a good one. It's much more baller than some bullshit like diamond medallion or whatever. What are you trying to say about Diamond Dime? <laughs> Nothing. You're not, you're not about Diamond Dime? Uh, you know. <laughs> I fucking wear my my back my backpack has the diamond medallion. Yeah, I, no, my, my bag does. Too. Yeah, of course it does. But I know, I more, it. what I'm saying is, this is why I'm boarding before you, <laughs> peon. See the tag? It says I'm boarding diamond. with first class, even though I didn't get upgraded. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Except in Atlanta, where everybody's diamond. Right, and you Michigan. Can. Oh, in Michigan, too. Yeah. Detroit's the yeah, other Yeah, Detroit's hub. a yeah. hub. So if you fly to Detroit oh, from Los bro. Angeles, it's like, you're number 13 yeah. of 89 people. <laughs> Dude, ATL to LAX? Bro, you ain't getting no upgrade. <laughs> people get downgraded. People were like, I know you bought a first-class ticket, but 7,000 people have status. before. Everyone in this airport has more status. Right, than exactly. <laughs> yeah, they're all, what's the thing above Diamond? It's Delta 360, the secret club. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, I think is that is it million miler? Is that where they drive you? No, to the plane it's just in a secret. Car? It's just secret club. They oh, don't, that's where they where they roll you in a Cayenne to the plane. Yeah, and yeah. they don't publish. They don't publish what it takes to get it. They just they just decide they just that you decide have it. that you can have it. Yeah, that's how. Uh, that's uh, that's the same thing with press cars. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly how, how press cars work. No one's gonna tell you how to hook that up. Yeah, the, yeah. The, uh, Figure it out for yourself, <laughs> fucko. This was hard. <laughs> Is that a common question you get? It's the only question. Yeah. How yeah. Do, how people do you get who to say, do how do I, yeah, because people who say, how do I get your job? Mm. They don't, that's not the, re, there's, that's, it's the sub question of that. Right, 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 right. I go, write something. Right. You know, get a camera, any camera, and make a video. Right. Then repeat. And they go, no, that's, but how do I get stuff to film? And I go, ah, well, that's the question you really want. Right. And I say, get a car, any car. Right, <laughs> right exactly. Write about it, yeah. Yeah, no, um, yeah, I mean, when I started out doing this, there were basically four books, four car magazines. Yeah. And websites were beginning to start up and take off, and a few websites existed, but it was an even smaller industry than it is now. You know, YouTube yeah. didn't exist. You couldn't just, like you said, set it up a camera. It didn't seem possible or real. Like, no, absolutely you not. You as a kid who were reading a car and driver, for me it was road and track, I'm sorry. That's but okay. Also, also car and driver. Um, but I, you, I read you, Rod and you, Custom. You'd read the book. <laughs> And you'd go, well, I, I'm never doing that. Right. How Especially do you get to do you've that? you've got Chubba and David E. Davis and fucking PJ O'Rourke. Right. R.I.P. Yeah. And uh, I was just reading the, the Car and Driver. Yeah. Uh, Jamie Kitman wrote that. Yeah, the, it's fantastic. Uh, but the, the 308 piece. Oh, the yeah, yeah. The 308 yeah, piece yeah, yeah, that yeah. PJ wrote, which is, um, <laughs> it's, the writing is incredible. It's like, oof, this would not fly no. today. No. And so- <laughs> <laughs> there were several old PJ pieces that we wanted to put up online, and then we read them. We were like, Ooh. "Oh, yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> like can't, we can't do, can't this. even do it." I, yeah. I do recommend people go read it because the writing is amazing. Yeah, and um, uh, driving like crazy. Yes. is a cra is a wild book. But there's a the 308 piece that where he drove a Ferrari 308 across the country, and it's a it's a it's a wild piece. the The lead is super buried in that piece. And did you see on Twitter that I did I shared what it no, was? No, no, no. So he's 
so he Ferrari had to get a car from the New York office to the LA office to right. appear in a movie. PJ somehow convinced them that he should drive it. Right. Which would fucking never happen today. Right. But he's driving like an asshole across the country and he's very writing in a very good, nice, not nice, but in a very prosaic way about right. the drive. And yeah, go down to the go down to the, the very end of this article, Zach. Scroll all the way down. The very, very end, the buried lead is it's a long piece last paragraph the story ends on a sad note the movie that this incredible car traveled all that way to be in will be called don't eat the snow from hawaii (laughs) so maybe western civilization hasn't quite been perfected yet you ever follow up on that (laughs) no do you know what don't eat the snow from hawaii is no the pilot for magnum pi really that's the name of the pilot episode of magnum magnum pi so actually so it wasn't a movie it it wasn't a a movie it was a series and it's and and it's possibly the most iconic 308 308 plug product placement in history and subtext two is that this article is written about the magnum pi ferrari Yeah, Yeah. yeah 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 I when That's I read that I was like Hawaii, huh? And I just IMDb'd it, and it just right away Magnum, Magnum PI, PI episode one. Wow! Yeah, <laughs> That's incredible. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, totally buried in this in this amazing article, and uh, I'm glad my googling fingers came up. Yeah, he wrote one about um, the the handling characteristics of pickup trucks yeah. in the early '80s. <laughs> And he compared it to like the handle, like it's like driving your front porch. <laughs> Take your couch out on your front porch and sit there and imagine you're just driving that. Yeah. And then there's like there was some like drinking and driving stuff in that. Yeah, there's so drinking, it's there's like drunk driving shit in everything. Yeah, wrote. exactly. And I mean, it was article, the seventies. The, uh, the three hundred eight one is where ass engine Nazi slot yes, car came from. Exactly, which that's is, where it was born. Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, that's a that's a pretty. I actually I forgot it was PJ. I thought it was Hunter Thompson, which in some it ways sounds they like could him. be interchangeable. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. many ways. Um, yeah. yeah, he. Um, I got to assign PJ to something when we were doing the 50th anniversary of 9/11. Uh-huh. Uh, he had a 964, and I asked him to do just sort of like a columny type thought piece about driving that car in New York and what it's like to live with, and and he just wrote this fantastic piece about like how it was a basically like you know dentists would get in it and like kill themselves and you know the dentist killer yeah. type thing and. And how much he loved it and how much it challenged him and how much he loved driving fast. The guy loved driving fast. Yeah. He had a great quote in one of his pieces about um, the only way to see the West is at 100 miles an hour or more. Yeah. That's and not, it's, it's, that's it's not so wrong. true. It's so true. It's really not wrong because so shit is mad spread out. You <laughs> right. might as well. It's spread out. It's far from the road. You might as it, well be going 120. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and that, that was in the time of like 55. So yeah. it's like us talking about going like 150 miles an hour. Well, that, an hour. I mean, that was interesting because I, I was too young to appreciate, you know, like a lot of those guys, like Brock and, and PJ, and they were, they had this obvious sort of libertarian thing, you know, for a while. And some of them kind of came around right, later. Right, um, But, you know, with the early Cannonball and all that, it, like, it, it, it actually was a way to to protest something that was kind of silly right the the 50 nationalized 55 mile an hour speed limit um and and it, it was silly in a in a way that and it, it sort of said something in a way that the modern cannonball culture really doesn't no it's not it's not really protesting the speed limits yeah it's just Let's see how far or how fast we can get across the country and how much fun we can have doing it. Yeah, which is great. I mean, I'm not no, I'm not putting that down. That's fantastic. But it was born of protest. Yeah, like, absolutely right. Yeah, it's it's there hasn't there hasn't been. I mean, the last the last vehicular. Well, I guess we could talk about the truckers in Canada if we want. But the, yeah, the the last sort of really effective protest I saw. Remember that YouTube video where. These guys, and I want to say it was in the Midwest. It might have been in Michigan. These these guys went out on the highway and went three wide and drove the speed limit and <laughs> wouldn't let anybody pass. And it was for like 10 miles. That's a nightmare. And by the time they got, you know, they had people kind of stationed on overpasses to watch right. what happened. And to photograph it. And, and by the it. time they got to like, ten, it was a fucking disaster. Of course. I mean, it was an unbelievable. Of course. And it, and it showed how ridiculous it was it would be if everybody actually drove, you know, the prescribed speed limit. It was, that, that was, cre- I was very creative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's a solid protest. Yeah. Um, 
But uh, yeah, there's also cars have been used for some bad things too. Of course. <laughs> like, I mean, it's well, the, and then there's people like doing you know drifting on the Golden Gate and all that sort well, of lawlessness. And I mean, you go drive around L.A. right now, and it's like these like takeovers. You know, yeah. find any major intersection has got fucking right. donuts in it now. Right. Yeah, I wanted to send one of our contributors to go cover one of those and figure out how to get get there before it starts, yeah. and then know that it's going to happen. And didn't you kind of do something like that? Yeah, it was I shady, followed one right? for like four hours. It was nuts, and it, I so it it was like 2015 when they were getting really big down here because uh, they kind of started in Oakland, right? And I wanted to film it for Drive, but I didn't know what we we're going to do with it, so I just had a camera and I was like. Uh, I forget. I was hooked in through Instagram with one of the people that helped organize the things because we did a little like NBC documentary um, or a segment on it. And so I knew where they were going. No, no, I knew which accounts to follow. And they let me follow them because they were blocking anyone from following them because they didn't want like right, cops of course. to watch. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Which didn't really work. Uh, so at, I'm, I'm at the office like 10 p.m. and I just see they're going to this place. I'm like, I'm just gonna fucking do it. And so I just, I got my Crown Vic looking. So I got my cop car <laughs> looking the way I look. And, uh, and I went and parked like behind a building and dude, it was nuts. I mean, it was the center of like Crenshaw Busters and something. <laughs> I mean, this was a busy intersection with restaurants where people were eating dinner, right, yeah. four lanes, and they fucking block it off and just start spinning donuts, yeah, going it's crazy. ultimate cr- lawlessness. But that night, so helicopter shows up People scatter, and I just keep following on Instagram, and you just follow the trail of cars, and I went to the next spot, and I went to the next spot. And finally, it's 2 a.m., I'm at a gas station, and they're like, everyone's fueling up, they're gonna go to the next place. I'm like, mm, I'm just gonna go back to the office I'm by myself, like, but I'll listen to the police scanner and watch this on Instagram. And I go back to the office, and this was the night where four different law enforcement agencies had coordinated to put a stop to this. So it was so the the takeover went to a parking lot near the 101, I think, like the 110 101 interchange. They got blocked in by the police and they just started like towing ticketing cars. Like they got really aggressive with it and it was the night. And so the 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 scanner on the phone was going nuts <laughs> on with the helicopter radio calls. I mean, it was really You really didn't have crazy. like a journalist vest that would have gotten you out of this? I had like a I had like an A7S in my hand or something, so I didn't I mean, I definitely look I look like a cop anyway, but um <laughs> Yeah, that was crazy. And then after that, I, I reviewed a sheriff's car on, on the one takes and I asked him, like, what ended up happening with those takeovers? They kind of like calmed down. And he was like, oh, yeah, we just started towing cars. Right. Like we stopped fucking around. And right. it's like we were in the Instagram chats, too. Like we're paying attention. <laughs> and right. That's not stupid. Happened. Yeah. Yeah. We'll take your car. Don't go. Yeah. And yeah. so they, they're not happening as much. So, yeah. Nuts. But, uh. What's uh, what's happening in the uh, in the world of uh, supercar testing? Anything good? Uh, anything good I tested the Chiron Super Sport Ooh. not too long ago. So have you driven all the variants? No, I, I've driven only the um, Sport and then the Super Sport. Okay. Um, so this is the this the, is the top speed one. Yes. Yeah. And well, it's got the engine from the top speed car. Um, oh. And it has the long tail too, but right. it doesn't go three hundred. It's limited to it's limited to like two seventy or two eighty something. Or yeah. something. Um, my God, is that amazing? Yeah, it's sixteen hundred PS, so I think it's fifteen seventy nine horsepower. Yeah, unbelievable. We drove the handling one, which is the that's the sport. No, what it's the pure sport. Pure sport. Pure sport. Yeah, yes, the sorry, pure that, sport. that was the first one I tested. Yeah, that and thing I, was delightful. So was the so was the super sport. Was I mean, the super sport noticeably different from the pure sport? It sounded a lot better. Oh really? Yeah. Um, Why is that? I, I don't know. It just huh. sounded like a lot better. I huh. mean, maybe it was a lack of sound deadening. Maybe. Um, I don't know what it was, but it was absolutely spectacular. Um, I don't love the long tail. I kind of liked it. You like it? Yeah, in person it looked really pretty cool. I mean, it, it's just special, too, because it's not it, – on an already rare car, this isn't even yeah. a rare version. Yeah. Um, 60, I think, in 2.2, quarter at 9.1 at 163 or 64. That's fucking I quick. did with the Let's wind – we, we test in both directions to cancel wind or elevation mm-hmm. or whatever. And um, – Oops. I did uh, 222 in one direction in 4,200 feet. 222 miles an hour? Yeah. At where was 4,200 feet? I mean, that's just uh, when I. That's, oh, when on I, a runway. So, yeah, well, I, we tested the Hyundai Proving Ground. And oh, okay. so I, you run out of space. It's yeah, like a 6,500 yeah. foot stretch. No. And when you're going 200, you're going kind of fast. So. Stable? 
It's so stable. Yeah. I mean, I I drove it with two hands on the wheel, but it's you could do it with one hand. Like yeah. like my mom could do that if she was interested in, in going. Did you that have fast. to do any? Do you didn't do any kind of prep work, right? You just rolled up and fucking rolled in the gas. No, that was it. yeah, that's it. I mean, yeah. it's got launch control, so it's dead easy. Yeah, yeah, that's excellent. No, it was good. Uh, so that's the fastest I've ever gone, and I was like, oh, I want to see how fast I can get over two twenty. <laughs> let's see if I can get this over two twenty. Yeah, um, yeah, that was fun, and it's like one point six G's, I think, at launch. And that's pretty And it's serious. still like one point, I think it's close to 1.1 G's at 60 miles an hour. Whoa. And oh. like the, the I think if you, Zach, if you pull up our, um, if you pull up Car and Driver's Instagram, we've got, I took a Speedo shot. I taped my phone to the, uh-huh. so you can see the Speedo. And it's just, I mean, it looks like it's oh, in, color. It oh, it's in my, it's in mine. You can pull in mine. Is that it right there? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Let's see. We can, we can play is that miles an hour? Yeah. Fuck me. Watch. I mean, the sweep from 100 <laughs> to 180. That's. Are you? Are you? Is that in the feed, Zach? Can we see that? Go back. Go back feed, to. Yep. Go back to replay that. So I'll count it off. It's for actually the audio faster people. than this. Oh, there's my dog, dog reacting. Oh. That's my now blind dog reacting. Okay, ready? Here we go. Zero, 30, 60, 70, 90, 100, 120, 140, 150, 60, 70. 80, 90, 200, 210, 220. 220. <laughs> that was miles an hour. That was counting in miles an yeah. hour in and real I time. Think this is, I think this is laggy. I think it's actually quicker than this. That's pretty fucking And crazy. then there was, um, every once in a while when you're doing high-speed testing, the TPMS sort of freaks out. Uh-huh. So there's a little TPMS freak out, which the commenters <laughs> had a field day with. Of and they were like, did, did you crap your pants? And I was like, I didn't even notice. Yeah. <laughs> TPMS means like uh, toilet paper monsieur. <laughs> <laughs> At yeah. 200, it Man. certainly does. That's, uh, yeah. that's the pure sport. That's the pure sport. I thought the Pure Sport was really, really It was good. really I mean, fun. It was really as fun. As it should be for $2.5 million. Uh, we had the Monroney for the, for the Super Sport. It was like $4.1 million. That's fucking crazy. It's really crazy. The num- I mean, money doesn't mean anything anymore. Well, I mean, if level, you have that if, much if money, it doesn't level, matter. If you're at that level, it just yeah. doesn't even mean anything. I forget what the option total was. The option total was like over a half million dollars in options. Yeah. Like it's just, it, it doesn't matter. I don't, you know, you just have to, you have to be at the point where you're just not counting. Right. Exactly. I mean, it, to them, it's probably like, you know, like a $4,000 car. Like, yeah. who cares? The kind do of you person, want sprinkles yeah. on your ice cream cone? You're like, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, what is it, 25 cents? Yeah. Okay. Great. But fine. if you go pick up one of those like digs magazines, like the LA real estate, and you look at Malibu, like... Like on any given one of those magazines, there's ten to fifteen homes that are over a hundred million dollars on, yeah. on the market right now. Right. Like, who are, who are these fucking people? Yeah. Like, have they just are they the ones who are about to crash the economy, or are they are <laughs> have they already crashed some other economy? Right. And which, are just here buying real on, estate. On which side <laughs> of this coin are they? Right. Yeah. You know. Or they're crypto. They're crypto billionaires. Right. Or have they <laughs> have they convinced a bunch of dumb people? <laughs> yeah. Yes. To it's not get... an actual house. It's an NFT of a house. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw. You know. You know how like uh, in the 08 crash there was like the. I don't know the terminology because I'm not a finance person, but it was like you take the mortgages, you put them together into right. a security, right. and then there was a derivative security where you're basically betting on this without having to own it. Right. right? They now have. I saw a thing where you can you can clone an NFT. So the whole point of this thing is that it can't be uh, right, but now you can. Right. Like you can now you can copy the NFT and <laughs> without a, and it's like oh my god, this is all such a scam. Yeah, well, there's a sucker born every minute. Just ugh. So, divorced celebrities hawking unregulated currencies, <laughs> securities. <laughs> It's so terrible. And untaxable, basically, Yeah, too. yeah. It's all just fucking super shady. That's who's buying Chiron's right now. And then I drove... Did you drive the Huracan STO? Yes. What did you think? I like that. I thought it was oh, delightful. yeah, you we were on the launch. Yeah. You were on the launch, yes. and then I got it for a couple of days on the, on the street. Yeah, same. I tested it. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it, wait, so, but I thought, was it you who told us that at Lightning Lap, it didn't actually go any quicker than the Performante? No, did I hear that uh, we you? didn't have it at Lightning Lap. They had it at Performance Car of the Year. Road and oh, Track had it. And, um yeah, but maybe maybe Johnny had it for track. best driver's car or whatever they're doing. Maybe yeah, I thought it was really nice. I mean, it was exciting. I thought it was exciting great. Car. I thought it was yeah. a really fun car. Yeah. It was like everything you want a Lamborghini to be. Yeah, get it without the stickers. 
Yeah, and the it's the rear were... the rear blindness is not fun either, but <laughs> whatever. Uh, I actually took a date it on it. It was rowdy, though. Yeah, I took a date on it, and I warned her. I was like, I have a Lamborghini next week, and she was like, what? <laughs> like, sign me up. Yeah. So, so we did, uh, Lamborghini calls it um, thrust control, is what they call launch control. <laughs> and we I, did, we did thrust like. Thrust mode act. Thrust mode, thrust mode, maybe that's what yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I can't remember what it was. And anyway, so. It does burnouts. Yeah, we did a launch. We did a launch um, on the on one of the ramps onto the two and just got it up to 100 and she was just screaming. But yeah, she, she regular people it. don't understand the, this kind of stuff. So that's, yeah, no, not at all. And yeah. it's completely foreign to them. And she told me like, oh, I've been in Teslas like when they were accelerating hard. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe she's up for this. And yeah. she was, she was game, but it was like, it was still pretty funny. I, I hadn't. I wasn't used to being able to do like a burnout in a Lamborghini, but I launched this thing on cold tires, right? And it went through them. three gears. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's Lamborghini McLaren. I, right, I see. right, right, right. Yeah, it was fucking quick. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but but and a little twitchy. I mean, a little sensitive to right. you know if you hit a bump and your hands move a little bit, like yeah, the car yeah, yeah. moves it's too. It's a little tardy. I mean, it's it's race car. It's race it's car race for the car, road for sure. Yeah, you eked me out in the lap times, but you had fresh tires. I had the oldest. <laughs> That's true. I had like a two day yeah. old set of tires. I think I had you by a few a few tenths. Yeah, you had but, me by but it a wasn't, tenth. It was definitely yeah. the tires. I, I'm blaming the tires. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I said uh, you could have it. You can have it. It was the tires. We did. We'd, we'd be tied, but for the tires. Right. Um, and we got to have a go in MC20 as well. Did oh, you drive yeah. MC20 uh, no, we just had it this week. Um, we're doing something with it, uh, comparison test. Um, that'll be in the next issue. It's and pretty cool. We tested it. Yeah, it's beautiful. And I, I mean, I, I was, the guys were sending me videos of it uh, accelerating and like, you know, doing photography and stuff. It and rips. It sounds great. Yeah, it rips. Yeah. It's yeah. cool. Speaking of sound, the new, the Type S, which I have outside, they've redone their intake plumbing or something and it sounds it's got that that really good like whoa you know right, like that, right, that right. V6 like the old NSX wind up. like the yeah. original NSX yeah, yeah it sounds really and it's fucking so fast is it it's i've got so one at home fast. but uh they i was supposed to test it yesterday but uh <laughs> but Your my dog, dog went blind <laughs> that's so sad <laughs> it so is sorry. really sad um but the uh D- did you like the the regular NSX the the faceless uh, so one? I did. Road and Track had a long-term one after they named it Performance Car of the Year, mm. and it was here in the L.A. area, and I drove it for, like, a couple days, and I had it in, like, the hybrid mode, and I was like, this car's not fun. No. What the hell is this? And then I started living with it in Sport Plus, and I was like, okay, this car's awesome. Yeah, you just have to leave it in Sport Plus all the time. All the time. Yeah. Exactly. And then I, once I realized that, I was like, okay, this, is, this car's really fun. It was really fast, and then this Type S... For me, everything I liked about the regular one is better on this one. And everything I didn't like about the other one is exactly the same on this one. Like, it, the, the pace up the canyon of this car is unbelievable. So the guy it who drove so it, fast. Our, my route to testing is Angeles Crest, mm-hmm. Angeles Forest, to the 14, out to Mojave, basically. Okay. Um, and it's about 85 miles from my house, 86 miles from my house to Mojave. Okay. And um, the guy who drove it out in my st- instead of me made it there in an hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he was just like, yeah, it was pretty special. Until I drove the Ford GT, the current gen Ford GT. Right. It was the quickest car I'd ever driven up over upper the, big over the mountain. Yeah. 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 And. I think this Type S is just as fast as the Ford GT. Wow. Came out. Yeah, it I, I, flies. That's cool. Um, yeah, I was kind of upset. I mean, you know, I, I wanted to go testing yesterday because the MC20 yeah. was going to be there. Um, we also tested an LX600. Uh, oh, Lexus. is that the new Lexus yeah, Land Cruiser? Yeah. So I've oh. been kicking around that in, around town a little bit. I haven't driven it that much, but our audience wouldn't give two fucks about it, which is too bad because I'd love to have a go. It's pretty cool. Is it? Yeah. I mean, it's a tank. Just like all of is those Land sa- Cruisers it's, and LXs. It's, a, it's its own there. platform still, right? Yes. It's not. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's one no, of those like. Exactly. And it feels it. Yeah. And it's, uh, I guess, I don't know. Um, Land Cruisers have always been, like Toyota had three build standards. Um, right. The first is like Camry, which is like pretty indestructible. The second yeah. is, you know, the trucks, which <clears> are <throat> obviously indestructible. And then the top tier was like designed to live off road. Yeah. I remember it was like uh, 10 year shelf life, 15 year shelf life, and then 25 20, years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. With yeah. never being on road. Yeah. And that's what the Land Cruisers were built to. And I don't know if this one currently is, um, but 
uh, it feels it. I mean, it feels just remarkably solid. Like it's body on frame, and it doesn't feel like it's yeah, body on yeah. frame, which is a pretty the last, cool trick. The last I drove a 570 at the end of the run, and it was like it was a fucking tank. I mean, yeah, it, it yeah. was going to be that and the cockroaches at the at the very end. I of the I really sort of considering like I've never owned an SUV. I've never owned an automatic, so this would break. Really? This would break two. Never. The, never. Good for you. <laughs> this would break two maxims that I have. That, like the, I've never, you know. But I, I think I would break it for an FJ100, like a, a nice V8 uh -huh. FJ100, just to chill in. And you know, I'm going to Michigan, so there aren't a lot of great roads there. Yeah, so it might There's be a nice no, thing. Yeah, you, you don't need to be driving stick on that grid. Who cares? Yeah, it, it is a grid. That's exactly it's what it is. Such a yeah. grid. Yeah. Like I every I'm I've met so many nice people in Michigan. Like I I I genuinely like like the people in that city so much. But I I just couldn't I just couldn't live there cuz the grid is just too flat and too grid. It Even is. by LA standards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's I mean too because, much. I mean all we have to do is I mean I'm 15 minutes from Angeles Crest. Yeah. Like I that, can't give up the mountains. That's dude. amazing. Yeah, where do you go test cars in Ann Arbor? Um, like in terms the, of roads, the, the UP. No, <laughs> there's go? there's like a good stretch of roads that actually a lot of development, like Ford development engineers okay. and GM development and um, uh, Dodge, Chrysler, Fiat, Stellantis of development engineers use. That's around Chelsea, Michigan, which is uh -huh. just outside of Ann Arbor, and that's where we do our ten best testing too. So there's like a really great like 14 mile loop of entertaining twists and mm -hmm. elevation changes and but it's short lived i mean it's not driving in the canyons yeah but we're spoiled we're completely spoiled yeah we're completely i just spoiled. like someone was asking me about the other day like where else could you do this job i was like i don't fucking know like the value of those mountains being there all the time all year for free the local knowledge right like the fact that like you know, if I keep it on the DL, I can film without like a permit and get right, in like right, in trouble. Right, right. Like, you know, if I go up early, I know I'm the only person up there. Exactly. You know, like, yeah, I I, I, I go to testing like at six in the morning, yeah. and then I have it all to myself. All, all the commuters are coming into town. <laughs> they call it the Palmdale 500. Yeah, and, it, and I'm just scaring the crap out of them because I'm just <laughs> you're going, going you're going yeah, and but but then but you know then there's a guy in a fucking box truck. All right, you know, <laughs> really, really pushing those bias plies. And then they also like some of the commuters will do illegal passes, oh my God. and so it's like, uh, and they don't, they have no idea you're coming that quickly. Number one, or that you're coming at all, because yeah. no one ever is going in that direction. We and saw this morning one dicey. of the shadiest double yellow passes. We were up at up, you know, on Angeles Crest. Um, above Upper Big Tahunga, there's the very tight section, and then it opens up, and there's that really good transition where you've got super long visibility. Right, right. You come left, and then it's like a like a nice open transition. This dude in a Fiesta ST did a triple car pass through that transition. It what we got we caught it on video. It was shady. <laughs> Like around the outside of a corner, yeah. Mid pass. Yeah, well, I mean, you think of like, I don't think it was commuters. It was like all sports cars. No, and it wasn't him, commuters. But he, I think he was like the biggest dick of that group, right. or he was just a dick going around three other normal people. But right. it was just like it was not very safe. No, yeah, it's it a little sketchy. scary. I, 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 you know, the cars I drive have incredibly high limits, and. I try to be, you know, I, I always have in mind, like, there could be a cyclist around the corner. Yeah. There could be a motorcyclist. There could no, be an accident make, around the you corner. You shouldn't make double yellow passes. No, 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 no. And, but I've, there, I've, I've come back from driving, I drove a GT2 RS, a 9912 GT2 RS, or sorry, GT3 RS, and then the 992 GT3 RS, when I was driving that back from testing, like, I got home and I was like, I should probably hide this car. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, if you, you like, know, I, I was like looking for choppers. It was totally like good fellas. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were going, I was going up and there was a, uh, a Ohio Patrol SUV going the other way. And uh, my friend Christian was in the car with me and he was like, oh, you should probably, you know, slow down. I was like, actually, <laughs> if that happens, the move is to speed up. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like, because by the time that guy stops and makes Turns a three point around. turn, I want to be five corners Tries ahead. his radio, which doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I need to be accelerated. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 
But I I definitely understand that. But I've also That's a good but being at the base of that forest and having to get to the Hyundai Proving Grounds is a really nice Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing and then you've got a, an actual track at the other end. And yeah. then I, I and then I do all the testing and it's like yeah. in total it's close to a 200 mile loop. Yeah. And then and then I can sit down and write the story. Yeah. Yeah, and I that's, that's very good. That's kind of amazing. That's a gift. And I've realized yeah. that over the past 10 and a half years of living here. Yeah. Well, you're keeping your house. Yeah. So you got to like build a little ADU in the back so when you come home you can you can have a Well, I was thinking about um Airbnb-ing it. Yeah. But then I got scared of like, you know, pornography being filmed there. Yeah. People people yeah. 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 Jizz? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I would be worried about people jizz. People renting yeah. it and dying in my house from like some oh, drug wow. overdose and wow. not being discovered okay. for a while. Do well, you think people get an Airbnb just to shoot heroin in? I don't know. My sister Ooh. put that thought into my head. <laughs> I think wouldn't it be more likely if they were just renters, like you know, they leased it from you for a year, but they also had that habit. I I don't know. I I hope that the, I would be priced out of their range, but I don't. What know. happened to my friend Sarah, who built a house in Palm Springs and then or bought a house and renovated it in Palm Springs, and then she was gonna use, she was gonna put it on air, on not Airbnb with a VRBO or right, whatever. Verbo. Yeah. Well, apparently, then, you're supposed to say Verbo from the ads. Apparently, not but VR, I was it, saying VRBO for dick. years. Verbo, please. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but then it ended up getting popular and booked out so much that she can't she can't like book it herself. Oh, but I imagine you can block off time. You right? probably can. Yeah. yeah, and that's what I thought. Like Airbnb would work nicely because then if I wanted to fly out for yeah. a long weekend, I could fly out for a long weekend. But then that furniture, that's then it's there's jizz. There could be jizz. Well, yeah. I mean, then it's a hotel room. Yeah, yeah which is just if it if it can fit up somebody's ass, it's been up somebody's ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's the hotel room rule. Definitely. <laughs> Um, what's uh? When, what, what time of year is Lightning Lap though? Uh, October. October. So we used to do it in the spring, yeah. like almost early summer, like beginning of June. And my God, it's way too hot in Virginia. And um, the GM guys who set their own times at you know doing the Grand Course like we do, um, they were always like way faster. And they're like, I would talk to Mero, and he'd be like, Yeah, it was like thirty five degrees when we did this. Oh, why why are you guys sense. doing this in eighty five degree weather? That makes sense. So yeah. we've switched it to the fall and. Um, Hopefully, you know, it, there's never a perfect time to get all the new cars. Um, you know, product launches are, you know, all throughout the year now. But we thought maybe the fall might give us something of an advantage to get more interesting cars and the newest stuff um, that's launching. So we're moving it to October. We did it this past year in October. We just, that's in the current issue. Is uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I wanted to ask about it. That was a great well. transition. Yeah, I know. That's, why, that's how I was getting there. <laughs> You're good at this. I know. It's almost <laughs> like it's a job. Um, <laughs> What uh, let's can you Zach? Can you find the uh, the sta the standing the lightning lap uh, results? It should be up and there while, somewhere. While he's looking for it, I, I'm you know, shit's getting faster. It's getting insanely powerful. Well, you it's drove getting, the AMG uh, GT the Black, Black Series. Series. Which is insanity. It's so good. It's so fucking crazy. So I put twelve hundred miles on the press car. <laughs> right, you drove it up I, north on yeah. a rally, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah which that's was awesome. it was way too much car for that event. What you needed is like. Any thirty, really? On uh, at at VIR, yeah. uh, Casey Colwell drove that one for time. Um, I drove it for fun. Yeah, and I mean, you come out of some corners and you're like, "Wow, this is crazy fast!" And then like, and then the afterburner hits, and you're just like, <laughs> Shh, "I can't believe how fast this thing is!" It's really, really. And it's like it's got a McLaren 720 motor in the front of it, pretty much. And I mean, the handling was incredible. I got out of it, and Casey was like, "Did you find understeer?" And I was like, "No, dude." He was like, "I'm going to go back out and try to find it." And I, it's just not there, even in the low speed stuff. Yeah. And it's just a phenomenal car, so easy to drive fast on track too. Yeah. And like the brakes are awesome, like all of it, it's just super stable. It just hoovered so much gravel into its own oh, body right, work on, right, right. on the yeah. road. Yeah, I mean the arrow. Yeah, and the arrow and the tires. It was so sticky. What do we have? What do we have there? We've got uh, the GT3, of yep. course. We've got a Blackwing. I see a Civic Type R uh, limited edition. Yeah, is that the 400Z or is that a BRZ? That's BRZ, right? On the right, uh, that's, the white a, car? that's a GR86. GR86. And then we did have a BRZ too. And an M5CS, right? Yep. Isn't that M5CS? Yep. I M5CS. See a, I see a GTI and a Golf R. Yep. Uh, I see a CT4. Civic, Civic Type R limited edition with yeah. the Pilot Sport Cup twos. And then there's like a Macan in the back, or is that Cayenne GT? 
There is a Cayenne GT, yeah. which is the fastest SUV we'd ever run. I mean, it ran like a 53, which is incredibly fast. That's yeah. just like, that's quicker. Doesn't it have like two degrees of negative camber? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> ceramic brakes? Yes, I, I think it does. I think it has. No, it has the, it has the giant, I think they're 17.3 inch front ceramic brakes yeah, from, yeah, the from the Urus. Yeah, from the Urus. Yeah. And the, I, the, um, uh, which we call it the uh, Audi RS Q8 had those too. So with when the we, ten piston calipers, we, we went on the launch for that. It was a local. It was local here, and we we took it and we went up on the on the 39, which was just oh, so great. I love the 39. And when we would go, you know, you have to use the dirt turnouts to to make the U turns. Right. For, so I'd make a U turn in the dirt turnout, and the, there would only be dirt marks on the inside half of the front tires. <laughs> the so outsides camber. would have like tire shine still on them. I was like, the outside of these tires aren't even touching the ground right now, dude. <laughs> yeah, that thing was incredible. Uh, uh, over a G in turn one, which is a pretty good That's skid crazy. pad simulator. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's just a remarkable car. Yeah. So uh, let's go to. The uh, the results here. How do we uh, how do we score? Let's go with the slowest to fastest. How do we do this? So I think at the bottom, Zach is, is uh, the full, full lap on time. Everything, the list. It's all. It's so many cars. Like it is. Like why? First off, like why is it important to run like SUVs? Just because they exist? Well, because that's what's popular and that's what exists mm -hmm. and that's what people are buying and that's where a lot of performance vehicles are going. I mean, there must have been a time in the mid 60s when people were like, why are you testing these fast sedans? Yeah. Like what's that about? Sure. And then, you know, then that became normal for sports sedans to exist. So, I think that's sort of happening. That's a transitioning happening with SUVs and and they're actually really really good. Like once you get over the fact that you're standing up basically at standing height in yeah. a car on a track, they work pretty decently well. So the fastest must have been the Black Series, right? Yeah, AMG yeah. That was, a that was the fastest at performance car of the year, road and track as well. That by was a decent not margin. I forget. It wasn't. It was around a second or so off of the McLaren Senna, which is a million which dollar is car. Ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And ridiculous. So the I don't know what set of tires yours had, but um, the Pilot uh, Sport Cup R's that are on the Black Series come in too um, hard and soft. <laughs> I Whoa. definitely had soft. You had the soft, hundred yeah. percent. They fuck every bit of gravel on the planet. Right? To yeah, them. They, yeah. They, they all the pickup. Yeah. yeah. And in the twelve hundred miles, the wear bars are probably showing on the yeah, meters. Probably. Yeah, probably. What was the? What's the delta? So two thirty seven O for the GT Black. What's the? So uh, two three and a half seconds. Yeah. Three and a half seconds from the GT three to the Black Series. That's actually. Uh, quite a lot, and it at, at the, it's a big track though. I it mean, is a big it's track. It's a four point one mile track. But at uh, at Road and Track uh, Performance Car of the Year, they used a mile and a half track. They used the North Loop at Monticello, right? And the Delta was only one second. It was pretty. It was pretty quick. And Travis, who was here last week, said that um, you know you guys you do a lot more laps. Yes, um, he got. Yeah, I think he only had like one. He had lap. three laps, yeah, and right. so he said basically that that that. The uh, it was easier to get up to pace in in the GT3 than it was in the black in series the black. yeah because the black series was just so fast well yeah I mean it's like when you get into a race car you're not used to that yeah. level of grip mm -hmm. immediately and that's exactly what would happen in that car yeah yeah what did you did you love the new GT3 uh, yeah that was what I sort of went out with that's I always go out in a Porsche Casey drove it for time but I always go out in a Porsche just to get up to speed quickly mm -hmm. and a lot of my cars so. Supply chain shortage caused BMW to not have spare tires. So most manufacturers send a set of tires, um, maybe sometimes two sets of tires, to replace the, the tires over the time because you know the tires get beat up. And, yeah. Um, but so BMW only the BMWs were there only had one set of tires. So I had M5 CS to drive um, X5 M, and the M3 Competition X Drive, and so they only had one set of tires. But I've lapped, Casey did the numbers, and I've probably done around 2,000 laps uh, over the 12 years that I've been doing uh, lightning laps, mm -hmm. so <laughs> I have a lot of experience. Lot of so I got up to speed in um, the GT3, and then, I, and then on the last day I jumped in my cars and lapped them for time. I also did the RSQ8, which did have another set of tires, and I was desperately trying to get that school bus under three minutes. 
but I couldn't quite do it. I kept messing up, or it, it would like the transmission would get angry and like start banging into the rev limiter oh. on the straight. And have you run an Urus? Did you ever run an Urus? Yes, that ran like a fifty-five. Oh, it so did. The, okay. So the the Urus is substantially quicker than the RS Q8. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. It was much quicker. But the the Urus was on. Uh, I think it was on Corsas. I think yeah. it was on P zero Corsas, and so was the. The Porsche, mm. um, the RSQ8 was on Sport Contact sixes, which are a good tire, but but not on a for, track not with for a track five thousand four hundred pound vehicle. It's yeah. you know no tire is going to stand up. Yeah, Turbo Primera Turbo S two forty seven. Yeah, that was that took the fastest sedan record. Is it? Oh, is that the fastest ever? Yeah, that's the fastest sedan we've. Do you ever think tested. Panameras are still relevant? I you know I, I that's a great question. So I drove when I first drove the Taycan, we had a Panamera at the same time out testing. And you jump from Taycan to Panamera, and you're like... It feels instantly ancient. Yeah, right? And, <laughs> yeah. like, really big yeah. in unnecessary ways. Yeah. And, like, the Taycan is so low. The cowl is so low. Like, the design is so, like, right on. Mm -hmm. And in isolation... Well, in isolation, most cars feel terrific. But Panamera, like, you drive it next to the Taycan, and I was like, this feels like an old car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's heavy and big, but... It has every single chassis trick from active anti roll bars to all wheel steering, and it's all integrated beautifully. And so, yeah, Dave Beard drove that one for time and, and got it down to 47 something. Turbo S is a, a hybrid now or is not? Uh, this wasn't the was E not This the wasn't e hybrid. the E hybrid. Yeah, one. Okay. no, it's just a, a Turbo S. All right. Which is the uh, new top range. And wait, oh, so what was the Panamera Turbo S 47.8 and Blackwing? 49.4. Now, that's actually, I would have thought that might have been closer. I would have thought the Blackwing would get closer to the Panamera in that regard. Well, so Casey drove that one for time, and I think he nailed it. The car's a little squirrely. Like, it's not an easy car to master. Mm. Um, but Casey actually beat the development engineer's time. I think the development engineer ran a 49.6 or 49.5. Oh, nice. And so Casey was pretty excited to beat the development engineer's yeah. time. Is that a stick or an auto car? Uh, automatic. It was an auto yeah. car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I loved that car. Oh my god! I mean, I didn't take car. it to a track, but I up in the up in the fucking mountains. That was about as great as sedans get. Did it rain while you had it? It did Why not. Did no, was it? I bet it's a handful. I drove rain. it in Michigan during Ten Best, and one of the days I was driving it back to the office when it was raining. I bet, <laughs> and it's like wheel spin in third gear, <laughs> wheel spin yeah. in fourth gear. Like, it's just nuts, and I was just like laughing my ass off. But then I kind of prefer the the four V Blackwing because. As a streetcar, mm. because it's just a little bit more reasonable as a streetcar, and it's plenty quick, and it's a lot. It feels tidier and smaller. And we get it on Monday. Yeah, I haven't I haven't had a go yet. We get it on Monday. I mean, so the I'm engine's still, you know, it's still, it's not a great, it's not an inspiring engine, but it's, you know, it's pretty good. The gearbox is good. The steering's fantastic. The interior is, you know, a CT4 interior, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. but but the chassis magic. I really enjoyed it. I, th I thought the five was excellent. Go, Zach. What up? What what trailed the uh, the Blackwing there? M5. Oh, so the Blackwing had the M5. It uh, did. by a little bit. And the M5 was on um, courses, P0 oh, wow. courses. Um, and the the Cadillac was on GM spec PS4 uh, P4s. PS, PS4s. Yeah. Yeah. P4s's. Yeah. And but you know the GM guys know how to bake a tire. So I'm sure there's a, more than a little bit of Cup R compound in that mm -hmm. tire. Mm -hmm. But again, I only had like. Two laps in anger in that car. Oh, because you had one set of because tires. Because I only had one set of tires. Yeah. Um, we get the M5 CS in a couple weeks too. It's I'm excited. Great. It yeah, is everyone great. Says good it was. I think they claim it's like over 250 pounds lighter, but it, we we might we weighed it and it was 147 pounds lighter than the competition. Okay. It what all do they comes. Take out? It all comes out of sound deadening. Oh, really? Um, and it's not really any louder. <laughs> and then they retune. Well, the, en the engine's not. It's not that. It's not that loud of an engine, right? And I mean, it's got big tires, and but it, it, it's just not any louder. Like there's no more wind noise. It's like what was all that sound deadening for? Like <laughs> just it, in case. It, it, yeah, it didn't need it at all. Um, but uh, I wonder if did anyone ride in the back seat? I wonder if it's louder if you sit in the back. Oh, maybe. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah it yeah. might be because right. of that. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I mean, all-wheel drive, ridiculous horsepower. I think it's six. 40 or 637 i can't remember what the number is um but yeah i mean easy car to drive fast and they redid the adaptive dampers on it 
Um, so even when you go to f- full firm, it's not like stupid hard. Yeah, it's like all very live. Like the whole car is just like so well sorted. Like they the really. The NSX had that. We put it in track mode on upper big today, and and they revised the um, mag ride in that as well. And going over like the kind of bumpy sections of it, it just soaked it up so well. Yeah, it yeah, did yeah, not yeah. feel like other cars race mode or track mode. Exactly, it's really where it's impressive. just abusive, and it's like, why would you want? I this? hate when yeah. they fucking do that. Yeah, and you know why they do that? I think for the test drive. Yeah, so exactly. So when people, when they go once around the block and they go to the different modes, they can feel it get way stiffer. Yeah, and they're like, And they go, oh, it's sporty. Yeah. Oh, this is yeah, dumb. so there was actually a manufacturer that would do that. I think it was Volvo. On their adaptive dampers in, like, the, what model was it? Like, like uh, the V70R or V60R yeah, or something? something yeah, something like that. They would do it. They would give you that super firm, ridiculous damper for, like, 10 seconds. <laughs> And then you'd be like, ooh, cool. And then they'd back it back down because really? they're like, we actually know better. <laughs> That's amazing. Like, this is where funny. you really should be. Yeah. And like, I mean, this track is really bumpy, so you don't want it to be overly stiff. Yeah. And, you know, you want the suspension to be have some sort of some, some, some compliance. And, I mean, that car just, I mean, it was so easy to drive quickly. We have the Golf R also right now. Sorry, I don't which know why is, people are How dare me. you? I apologize. Uh, whatever. We have the Golf R right now, and it has this, uh, the it has, you know, normal sport race and then Nürburgring. Right. And the Nürburgring dials the shocks back down to right. comfort. That's exactly it. <laughs> yeah. So, and that would that would be like the choice here, because yeah. the track isn't perfectly smooth. There's yeah. lots of elevation changes. You're whacking into curbing. Um, and that's what I heard years ago, like at the Nürburgring, like the Porsche drivers didn't put it in sport. Yeah. They didn't put it in PASM sport. They just left it in PASM normal because that was the ideal setting for a bumpy track. Yeah. And it's like all these yahoos are putting their cars as stiff as possible, me included, because I overdamped my 993 like an idiot. But, Did you? Yeah. Mm. But womp, womp. You know, that's another story. <laughs> What's after the uh, the oh, Mustang Mach One two fifty one four respectable yeah. very nice car yeah 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 it's like a Shelby without the warranty claims right exactly uh, yeah uh, without the oil <laughs> consumption without, yeah, yeah. It, it's basically a, a GT three fifty chassis with uh, without the flat plane yeah crank, a late GT three fifty chassis with yeah. the with the um, adjustable camber in yeah. the front yeah I like those car that car a lot that's a lot of car for the money I totally. don't see a lot of them around no nobody why are people them. buying them. I don't know. Same reason people don't buy uh, Camaros. Uh, I don't think that's why people don't buy Camaros. <laughs> <laughs> I think that without a new Transformers movie, there's no real oh, reason there's to no buy Camaro. There's yeah. no real reason to buy a Camaro right now. No, these the Mach One was was really good. I'm surprised at how few of them I I see. It might be too expensive to not have that motor in people's eyes. Yeah, maybe, but. Maybe. Yeah, but, I don't know. But yeah, but and I, then maybe if you want a Mustang with that attitude that you're only going to drive occasionally, you just pony up for the GT350 yeah. or GT350R. Yeah. Uh, Cayenne Turbo GT Coupe. There it is. The How do you feel about the Coupe SUVs, though? I mean, it's, it's so so kind of silly, I mean, right? It's, you're trying to buy something practical, and then you make it less practical, but, you know. Because you, it's, like, it's like the personal luxury Coupe, right? Yes, exactly. I need to take up as much space as right. possible on the road right. for me. For my style. For my, for my style. Bill Blass Mark VI or whatever, Mark yeah. V. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I do like the center exhaust, though. Oh, it's badass. That yeah. car's awesome. Yeah. That, that car, they fun. drive great. They're real They're real cool. And then I drove the M3 M uh, Competition X Drive. How did and you I, feel about the all-wheel drive? I loved it. I, I liked it a lot more than the rear driver. Um, during 10 Best, we had a manual rear driver, um, which I drove at Grattan, which is a small track in, in Michigan. And uh, I drove it back-to-back with the CT4V Blackwing. And I was like, the CT4V Blackwing destroys this thing. Like, it was just, the steering was so much better. Like, you know, it just felt like so much more connected and easy to drive quickly and actually gave you feedback but this car um actually brought a lot of the feedback back like wow. it felt like whoever did the final tune on this car well this really... is a competition and the manuals are not correct yeah so they're lower there's a horsepower big, there's a, yeah and there's a little i think there's a difference in tuning isn't there also well i mean one's rear drive the well the, the 473 horse one that i drove was rear drive and then the x drive the competitions are x drive with the 500 are all competitions x drive i think so I okay, so. why did I think I, think, I thought I it could be was. wrong? No, no, I, I thought it is, but Zach said that the are. one that we the competition we drove was rear drive, but it was not manual, it was automatic. Right, all the competitions are automatic. Yes, but right. are they all all wheel drive? I believe so, but okay. I definitely could be wrong. Well, you're the fucking editor in chief of Car and Driver, you well, better fucking know. 
I mean, there's a lot of things. I'm just a dumb YouTuber. What am I? I'm not supposed to know anything. Uh, did it say? I don't know. Let's look at car and driver. Transmission, chassis. I don't know. People are going to be... BMW nerds are going to be screaming at their fucking radio. Yeah, that right I don't now. know this, but I, I think that's right. I mean... I don't know. I thought Maybe it was for 2022. Too. The longer I work we, at a car never... magazine, unfortunately, the less I can commit car stuff to memory. Yeah. It, when it, I was, it when has this to wasn't some my other job, stuff out. Yeah. When this wasn't my job, like, my God, I knew all of this stuff in and out. Well, because you weren't studying every new car, every, you know, you didn't have to regurgitate the stuff, you know, for articles. I understand. It is very difficult. To, Zach will figure it out. Okay. But um, the, the, I can't get behind the styling, though. I can't get behind the nostrils. Oh, it's ridiculous. It's not good. It's ridiculous. It's and it, good. I mean, it looks better on the M cars because it's blacked out um, versus like a four. A oh, four, a four, uh, Rear wheel M3 competition. Yeah, no, you can get it in both. Yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah. I will say, because we drove the regular M4 and then the M3 comp pretty close together, and the M3 comp felt like, a, a like you said, totally different chassis, more responsive, way more eager to turn. To talk it through the hands, like all that stuff. Right. So, so I think what's really interesting is if the all-wheel drive system is as good and subtle as you and Travis have said it is, then that's awesome. Yeah, I thought it was totally subtle, and then it just claws out of corners. Like then you just go watt that much faster out of a corner, yeah. and you don't worry about it because you're not going to get like any wheel spin or oversteer. They we just had the 240, the M240, and they've done the last. M235 and 240 with the all-wheel drive was pretty clunky compared to the rear drive. This one, although they're all all-wheel drive so far, right. pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did um, a, they've done a nice one. job. We had one at Lightning Lab. Oh, you a did? A purple one. I think oh, you had the, a purple one too, right? Please. Yeah. Thunder Knight Metallic. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, purple is uh, popular. Was it quick? Yeah, it, I think it did really well. Um, CT4V, 255, we talked about that. Yeah, we were hoping to get that one a little quicker, but we didn't. Bentley GT Speed. Do yeah. we book that, Zach? Mm, Efren, I think, was checking. Okay. We, we, we're up. trying to book the GT Speed. We keep hearing nice things. It's so fast. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the V8 ones are ridiculous. The W12 ones are just over the top. Like it's The V8 nutty. was the secret. That was the secret one in the last gen. Yeah, and it's in this gen, too. I mean, it's a bit lighter. It's a bit lighter than the 12, but the 12 is just, you know. The Speed is the 12, though, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. It's the high horse like yeah. 600 whatever 40 or 60 horsepower they are the new interior the current gen the new interiors are so good oh yeah They're well i mean so everybody else nice. when when a kia telluride has a beautiful interior mm -hmm. like where does bentley go and yeah. they have to go up and they actually nailed it yeah. yeah 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 keep going up oh the x5m competition oh i drove that i think i drove that one lap in anger 300. It's I, I raced one of those in, in the One Lab of America a few years ago. Oh, you did? In the SUV class, yeah. And it was fucking fast. It's really fast. Yeah, it and, it, and the brakes were good. It just had iron brakes. It didn't have carbon ceramics. It just had iron brakes. Yeah. The thing stopped. And the nice thing about SUVs is you can just pound the shit out of them over curbing. Yeah. Where, yeah. you know, and they don't care. They're just like, they've got all this wheel travel, and you're just like, woohoo! Yeah. Like, when I lapped matter. a track hawk at Road Atlanta, I went straight across turn three. <laughs> I did not, I straight lined from right. two to four, like all the way through. Doesn't the grass. matter. Make your own track. Yeah. 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 Partway grass and partway air. Exactly. Like, exactly. <laughs> yeah. The X5, they don't give a shit. Uh, and then that's, our, that's Those our new are fastest front driver. That's our new fastest Fastest front ever? Yeah. Well, it's a very nice car. It's a great car. And yeah. on Cup 2s, my God. Yeah. yeah. Civic Type R, limited edition. The fact that it's limited edition doesn't do that much, but it's it's very, very nice car yeah, to yeah, drive. Yeah. No, super fun and powerful. And we didn't have any overheating issues on track or anything. It yeah. just lapped and did fine. I think they solved that after yeah. the first year, After the right? first batch. Zach, yeah. let's skip to where the M240 came there it is. Oh, oh, uh, 303. That's 303. respectable. That's pretty good, right? Yeah. I mean, for for like a fifty-five thousand dollar car. Yeah. That's, that's not really good. intended for track usage either. Yeah. And it's almost you know, it's the three minute mark used to be like the eight minute mark at Nurburgring, mm -hmm. and at least in our heads. Um, but now that mark is you know, kind of moved quickly down, just like it did at the ring. Well, to go back to the, to where we kind of started, like, at what point is enough enough in terms of like what is being sold to people right. and like because there's no extra training to buy any of this shit the roads are the same the right. roads have been the same for 40 years they're going to be the same they're not right. they're not you know i'm not saying that like that like we need to like 
make laws against it, but it's just like it, it, it doesn't always translate to them being more fun or more engaging. You know? uh, well, I mean, in the case of like a GT3, I think it does. Okay. The faster GT, and, you know, the GT3s have gotten progressively faster and faster and faster, and I, I think they're more fun than they were. I mean, they were still a lot of fun before when they were slower, but yeah, they're still a ton of fun. And for people that know what they're doing and can appreciate it and corner over the, you know, the regular people 0.4 G threshold that regular people seem to stick to, um, yeah, that's like, I mean, that's, I don't know. For me, it's, that's where the magic is. But then again, I did say when I got home, like, I, my heart was beating and I was like looking for choppers too. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I guess the GT3 is maybe not a great example because it is a little more incremental. You right. know, it's gone from 380 horsepower 16 years ago to 500 now, as opposed to, Let's see, that same 16 years ago, the Ferrari 360 had 390 horsepower, and right. now we're, we're knocking on the door of 700, right. exactly. or in some cases, and with the SF90, Corvette. you know, 1,000 horsepower. Um, it's Some of these things, and granted, yeah, okay, you need seven figures to get, to get into some of this stuff, but it's gotten a little nuts. I'm Not- okay with it. <laughs> 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 All right. I'm okay with it. I mean, I, I there have are you had cars. any uh, electric vehicles at Lightning Lab? Yeah, um, we had a Tesla Model S years ago, um, but like you know, early on before any of the Plaid, and this is like in '14 or '15, we took our long termer out there, and it, going into turn one, the pedal, the brake pedal just went <laughs> straight to the floor. Um, and then you're like, we had maybe Tycon, not, maybe not this for a while. We had Tycon last year, uh-huh. and Porsche brought two Tycons, thinking like, oh, we're not, we're doing all how this charging thing's going to go, and we never had to use the second car. Uh, we never, you know, you just plug it in after we were doing it. And the way the way Lightning Lab works is, we each have about four. We each have about four cars, and we do check each other's work, especially if we think like a time is suspect. We'll drive each other's cars, um, and we're usually very close to each other. We're usually within a half second or a mm-hmm. second of each other. Um, and uh, so anyway, the way it works is you have your four cars and, you know, production cars aren't going to survive more than a lap of one fast lap on a four mile track uh, without, you know, the tires getting hot and the brakes getting hot. So the Taycan would go out, do its lap, do a fast lap, do a cool down lap, do a fast lap, do a cool down lap and then come in and charge. And then as you cycle through the rest of your cars during the day, then the Taycan has enough charge to do that again. So mm-hmm. it was never like an issue. Um, but but I mean, we'd like to do more electric cars. It's hard to get our hands on them. I asked Lucid, but it was way too early for them to send us a car. Um, it'd be fun to do electrics, yeah. I mean, would, I think we need fu- to. It would be a fun class. I mean, and as people care more about it, I mean, you know, it's obvious electric cars are like good at drag racing, like Absolutely. fucking shocker, right? You know what I mean? But but uh, but can the battery survive can a four point one mile lap or the brakes? And can the brakes survive? Yeah, uh, they're all really heavy because they have a giant battery pack. So you know, they're like SUV weights in sedans. Um, but I, I would love to. I mean, I'd love to have a plaid out there. I think it'd be so much fun. I, I think it would be fun to see what they can do. But, you know, Tesla doesn't give out press cars, so then and we have fucking to... fucking Turo one, like Randy and Jason did. <laughs> I think they got approval from the owner. They did. You can't, you no, can't, they, they yeah, did. You, but can't like, Turo, they, you can't Turo stuff and track it. They, they You can if the owner says you can. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but we, we have rented Teslas. There's... Um, there are rental companies that rent to the OEMs that yeah. buy that buy cars and then rent them to the OEMs for testing. Oh, and so we've rented from them, and then they know, obviously know what we're doing with them. And yeah, that's an interesting business. I didn't, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, as a, it's expensive. The, the it's expensive to rent testing them. business model. Yep, it's expensive because they know what you're. They know you're beating the piss out of them. Well, that and you know, car manufacturers t- tend to have deep pockets, and, and you know, and it's a business. Yeah, it's a business. So that's they they, business. they they charge. It's in Michigan. They charge what they can get. Uh, yeah, they're. I think they're all over the place. Really? Yeah. Or they can. Oh. They'll bring you a car wherever. Oh, that's interesting. It's called uh, Captive. Captive Automotive. Is the oh, company. with no e at the end, right? C A P T I V. I can't remember if they I don't have know. An e I think I feel like I've heard of that before. Yeah. yeah. But they, they they'll they'll send cars to OEMs for their own you know benchmarking mm. and testing and all that kind of work. Take them shits apart. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so assemble them and put them. Back I mean, together. when we when we tested a Plaid um, a couple months ago, yeah, we rented it. We rented the Plaid, and right. that's that's what it takes to get into a Tesla. At least, you yeah. know, a non-customer Tesla. <laughs> yeah, customers have offered, but yeah, I I 
just uh, I know bad design when I see it. That I'm a little leery. I'm a no little leery confidence. of testing like right, you know, people's cars. Like I, oh, I don't. You want never to. know what's going to happen. And yeah, yeah. I don't have fuck insurance for that. Yeah, and we've done it. We've done it before, and then. Um, you know, we, we buy them tires, like we'll buy them a new set of tires and oh, that's then awful they'll nice still, you. they'll still flame you on Reddit for whatever <laughs> imagined slighting that happened. I don't know. Yeah. I, I wouldn't don't want to. Yeah. I've had not, offers, but I don't really want right, to. Right. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the Patreon. We got a lot of, uh, questions. We will get through, uh, get through quite a few. Um, I asterisk ones that are more related to Tony or directed at oh, Tony. Oh, great. Well, we'll um, start. We'll start with those. The, so, the yeah. other ones we can hit in a uh, our uh, Pro Driver show on Sunday. Great. Uh, of course, patreoncom slash podcast If you want to ask questions to the show, if you want an ad-free listening or watching experience, if you want to uh, not have to wait till Tuesday or Thursday and get your shows right away when they're recorded, patreoncom slash the Smoking Tire Podcast. Uh, alrighty then. Dante says, uh, with cars becoming so quick and powerful, should the zero to 60 test and other metrics be updated to help everyday consumers? Well, yeah. I mean, we, we don't just test a 60. We'll test as far, you know, as fast as wherever we're testing allows. Um, so I've started to look at zero to 100 numbers, you know, even for supercars, zero to 150 numbers. So that sort of gives you the... Um, you know, it gives you more space. It gives you, it, it allows the cars to differentiate themselves. Because yeah. if everything's doing zero to 60 from 2.5 to 2.1, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, it's not that meaningful. And we, we also, did, we started doing um, brake testing from 100 to zero mm. because all the 70 to zero stuff was falling in within like 10, 15 feet. Uh -huh. So we started doing 100 to zero, which is a more brutal test. And then you can really see how the braking system reacts to that, how the tires react to it. And you just get a, it's a better differentiator. So yeah, I mean, that's that's exactly why we go beyond 60. Yeah, that's a good quarter one. mile is, you know, always a good test. Too. Quarter mile is better than 60. Yeah. I, don't, I don't really care for the zero to 60 because like. And a lot of zero to 60s are like, how good is your launch control system? Yeah. Like how, how, how well did they dial it in? Yeah. So. We just uh, drove the GTI, which has the slowest, least dramatic use of launch control I've ever <laughs> experienced in my life. <laughs> like I've driven slower cars, obviously, but never ones with where it's like launch mode engaged. Right. And then it fucking drags the clutches for four seconds on the way to <laughs> 60. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> Uh, Corey G, thoughts on digital suspension controllers like DSC Sport, who combine gyro and accelerometer sensors with tractive damper, dampers. Uh, I've driven on DSC Sport, um, both when uh, paired with uh, GM mag ride shocks and compared with the tractive stuff. And I think it works pretty well, actually. Have you yeah. seen that stuff ever? No, I've never driven it. So I mean, they, you know, typical adaptive dampers are reactive, right? right? You can set your stiffness, but then they're sensing the road and adjusting from there. These, ha this, the DSC controller hacks that, and it has a G-force thing. So rather than responding to terrain, when you brake, it loads up. Right, it senses that right. you're braking, and it stiffens the front. And does it? And right, it it's not guessing. It's not guessing at what the car's doing. Correct. It's actually going. It from, becomes active. Right. That's what um, Corvette and a few other manufacturers have accelerometers on each um, on each corner, mm -hmm. just for that reason. Yeah. And then they send that information to the mag ride. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if like because DSC's been around for like five six years. I wouldn't be surprised if manufacturers start to do that right you know now um at, not maybe not directly as a response but like it's a good idea right because otherwise you're relying on the algorithm for yeah. for damping yeah i mean 10 grand a set for tractive dampers and dsc versus nine grand for a set of olins or something like yeah it's not it's not a terrible way to spend money if you really care about improving the performance and feel of your of your car on, on a racetrack and you've already optimized tires which are the yeah which are the low-hanging fruit for that yeah, for sure i mean it's i i i i've i've met met the guys who make it i've driven in a bunch of different cars and those systems work they they do work they're cool um David Zumod, how do you feel about New York City using cameras with microphones to ticket loud cars? I was unaware that they were I, doing that. I was unaware that they are uh, that they are doing that as well. Um, I mean, 
I don't think people will like this. <laughs> Matt turned 40 is no. what this answer is going to be. <laughs> no, I think I, I, I don't I think it's better than cops arbitrarily pulling people over. Right. OK. And having a, a physical interaction. Right. For for that. Um, I mean, is there like. Is there is there a legal limit? Do we know what the limit is? Is the right. limit published? Exactly. You know, if it's one thing if if we know what the rule is, and then you choose to operate outside that rule, and and if you have a production car that just happens to be loud, like you know a C seven ZR one or something, yeah. and then you go by one of these things and get ticketed, like how is that your fault? I don't. You have a street legal car. Yeah, that I, you have I not think modified. I remember that happening. It, it happened some... to um, Blake when he was driving the F Type R uh -huh. when it first came out. He got pulled over in Santa Monica, and they were like. What did you do, do, do to your exhaust? He's like, this is a press Nothing car. What are you talking about? But that car uh, was insanely loud. They had right. never heard of Burble Tune in 20 years. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, this, so California law is that uh, the legal limit for exhaust note is 95 decibels. From what distance? At what distance? Yeah. I, I, I bet uh, the uh, yeah police officers can, quote, right. exercise their judgment if your exhaust note is over the limit. Let me just say that if you get a ticket for this, you should call off the record. Well, I guarantee they make it right. go away. That's our yeah. sponsor, offtherecord.com slash TST. I gar oh, 50 feet at the center line is the okay. vehicle code. And how are they measuring it? They're I not. Mean, it's good judgment. Well, I think they can pull you over and they have a if they have a decibel meter in the car, they could you know, run it there and stand wherever they want to stand. Right. The yeah. question for New York is like, is this is the microphone always going to be fifty feet from the car it's ticketing? Yeah, I mean, how do you know? It, yeah, it, yeah. It, there's a lot. It's like a red light camera. You know, right. they have problems with those. So no, a I, lot of, I'd rather a lot of... it be an automated system, where you get a ticket, you don't stop, you keep right. fucking driving. They mail it to your house, and you can deal with it however you deal with it. Then it becomes a reason for a cop to pull you over. Right. Take you out of the car, have some kind of altercation, maybe search you for something else. Right. The fact that it's automated and you're not pulled over on the side of the road, people might not like to hear that, but I'd rather that. that. Well, I mean, and also you're not putting a police officer... Um he could be doing something else that's a bit more important right. than, pulling, than bothering people with loud exhaust. Yeah, exactly, exactly. My, most people probably don't expect me to give that answer, but I'd rather that, assuming we know what the law is and, and how to stay within it. You right. know? Uh, Jake said, as a recent corporate communications graduate, uh, what advice would you have for finding employment opportunities in the automotive field? I have absolutely no idea, Jake. Oh, okay. So he wants, he wants to go to work into PR. in cars. Yeah. yeah. Would it limit me only to PR positions? Or are there other positions that'd be worth looking at? I mean, you have a degree in PR. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what he. I don't know what he wants to do. I guess he could do anything. I mean, it's like you said. Like the first thing you say, like write something. Yeah, and I write mean, something interesting and good. I, I, the problem is, I've never worked for a car company. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that entails. I don't know how you get that job. I don't I, know. I, 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 I mean, a lot of people come up through uh, public relations agencies, uh -huh. and then they switch over to the OEMs. Okay. Um, and a lot of people start as automotive journalists. And yes, then, and, and then, then they, go work and then they go over there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, the car scheduling job at Automobile was like a feeder to the PR world. Interesting. Because all you do is call PR people all day long and get cars, and then they get to know you, and then you, they develop relationships, and then when a job opens up, they would offer that job. Like Monty Doran, who's at uh, mm -hmm. GM. Uh, that's how, yeah, I used to work with him. He was the car schedule at Automobile, and I worked as a gopher there. And then he got a great offer to go into PR, and he never looked back. I, I mean, there's other, like, I would say look beyond OEMs. Right. Like, there's so many aftermarket companies, right? Yeah. Like, there's there's racing shops, there's wheel companies, there's tuning companies, there's, like, anyone at SEMA. <laughs> Like right, any, right, right. Go to SEMA. Yeah. Talk to anybody. Um, you know, they all need someone to write their social media, write their emails, take inquiries from journalists. Like, um, yeah, it's a foot in the door thing for sure. Yeah, and it's just a matter of finding the right door. And because you're so young, like this guy, once he gets started, he'll understand the world more. Like he'll understand the industry more and see. Oh, what are these other positions that I might be interested in besides PR? But like, if you are 
if you're educated and you know most qualified for that one thing, start there and then start looking around. But I don't think he's limited to answer his question. I don't think mm-hmm. he's limited at all. I think he'd do whatever he wants. If he's talented and smart and capable and motivated, like he can do whatever he wants. I mean, if, if he can write, he can become a writer. If he's, if he's good on camera and he knows a lot about cars and can do walk-arounds, he could be the next Doug DeMuro. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you just have to watch a lot of Gilmore Girls first, I think. <laughs> Get a house in Nantucket. Uh, Raymond Lee, in Tony's opinion, what non-rack and pinion car has the best steering? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I actually owned a 540i six-speed, which has uh, which has a um, a recirculating ball steering system. Uh, and E34, E39? E39. Oh, Only the nice V8 stars. did. The, the six cylinders had rack mm-hmm. and pinion. The V8s, for whatever packaging reason, had recirculating ball. And that car, I mean, okay, on a track, yes, it felt good. Going down a freeway, when it, if there was any sort of wind, I drove that once, and I was like, <laughs> I read the, I went back and read the car and driver, and I was like, how the hell did you guys miss this? <laughs> like, this car has horrible steering. And like, I mean, it was on summer tires, it was on great Otherwise, tires. Otherwise, a pretty nice car. Oh, my God, amazing car. And it was great on track. It was fun to track, but um, I didn't think that was particularly good. Uh, I think E34 is probably better. My mom had an E34, but I mean, I haven't driven an E34 in, I don't know, 25 years. Um, so I can't really remember. I'm trying to think. My Lancia Fulvia had a pretty nice recirculating ball <laughs> gearbox <laughs> or steering box. Um, and that was actually nice. That actually was like really pin sharp and good and loaded up beautifully. It was non assisted. Yeah. Um, on Maybe the key tires. is to have non assisted. Yeah, circulating yeah. More, then it's okay. Maybe. And I mean, so many, I mean, it's so easy for the steering box to go um, out of adjustment and then you just get crappy steering. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I can't, I can't think of enough that I've driven recently that I could pick a favorite. So I'll go with my Lancia. Cool. Uh, Miguel said uh, if someone wanted to drop everything and move to a new city <laughs> or state just to work at a magazine, how would you handle that situation if someone came to you and said they left everything behind to come work for your team? Well, I would hope that they would have the job first before they did that. But I mean, that that's that's sort of like that's a bold move. Yeah. Um, and it's not necessarily going to succeed. But, you know, if somebody came to my door and was like, I moved here for this job or for, you know, I'm applying for this job and I've already moved here. Like, that's a little scary, but. You know, if they're that committed and they're that talented and they're the right person for the job, yeah. I mean, what's scarier? I've already moved here and I'm hoping to get a job with your magazine, or <laughs> I don't live here, but I'm willing to move if you give me a job at your magazine. A, a B is far less scary. Yeah. A, a has some stalkery yeah. feel to yeah. it, but yeah, it's like the something about Mary. Like I just I bought this one way ticket to come see you. I haven't <laughs> right. seen you in fifteen exactly. years. I exactly. love you. Yeah. Right. They were, this relationship is moving very fast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Dan Mosqueda says, Tony, how much influence did David E. Davis have on your career? Oh, that's an awesome question. Um, actually, a massive influence. Um, I grew up reading Car and Driver when David E. was editor in chief. Um, he moved over to automobile uh, when he founded automobile in '86. And then I started reading Automobile and Car and Driver. Um, I actually, as a teenager, I was at a Tigers game and I saw David E. in the stands. And David E. was like bigger than life. Like he wore like ridiculously expensive suits. Um, you know, he, yeah. Like, he, like, only time I ever saw that guy in person, he was dressed like Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, the man. He was the most 19th century man. Like he would. He had like a hat maker. Like yeah. he probably had like a barrel maker. Jack Baruth. He probably has knew that like too. a Cooper. He's got a, he had he's a, got a homie on Savile Row. Exactly. Yeah. He had his. He had his shoes made. Yeah. Like all of that stuff. Like, um, but. You know, he was in like the Sunday New York Times like fashion section. Oh, was he? Yeah, somebody saw funny. like some editor saw him on the street and was like, "Who the, who the hell is this guy That's wearing so a cape funny. with a top hat and like a cane?" But anyway, so back to David. E. So you have you, to be so successful or so confident to be able to pull that off. That's amazing. oh, he was a total yeah. badass. I mean, the guy was just fearless in the best possible way. In the opening ad for Automobile Magazine, they're here in California, like in the canyons, and David E's wearing like a white suit, like dressed almost like Colonel Sanders. So anyway, what I'm, my point is, 
when you see this guy in a crowd, he stands out. So I saw him at a Tigers game and I walked up to him and I was like, oh my God, like I'm such a huge fan of yours. Like it's so, I didn't give a backhanded compliment. <laughs> I sold everything to move in with you. Right. Can I have exactly. a job? I used to think you sucked, but I sold everything to move in with you and I'm a huge fan now. Right. Like, I'll, I'll be following you home. Combine it all. No, so I, that was the first time I met him. And then um, I started working at Automobile and Gene Jennings had taken over from David E. So David E was working down the street and still connected with Automobile. Um, when Eddie Alterman left Automobile to start MPH, um, David E. was left without a lunch date. And so he started calling me to have lunch with him. Like my hero is calling me to have lunch with him. And so we'd go out in Ann Arbor and have lunch. Cause I, I mean, Eddie had been like, you know, Eddie left and wasn't in Ann Arbor anymore. And Eddie used to be like his like, you know, friend. And, and then I became friends with David E. And it was just, Insane. That's cool. Did you feel weird dressed like a normal person around oh, him? Oh, completely. Because I dressed like this. And was he, he was... like, listen, I like you, but I, I can't be seen with you like this. And he was a big dude. Like, I mean, he was big as a bear and yeah. like dressed beautifully <laughs> and like talking about like, you know, you know how his shoes are like, or like, you know, he's in, in England where they're making his shoes. Like, they have like, how much do the... they pay you to buy all this fucking right, shit? Right, exactly. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so I mean, he had a massive, and also uh, one of the things that was important to David E was storytelling, writing. Um, all that stuff was massively important, and that's what's you know that's what creates a great magazine. That's what creates a great website, and that's what differentiates us. Yeah. Uh, good answer to the good question. Uh, Andrew says uh, force is mass multiplied by velocity twice, uh, with electric cars being eight hundred to fifteen hundred more pounds than a comparable uh, combustion car. Should we just expect car accidents to be a magnitude worse? That's interesting. I don't think that's. I mean. I think it's positioned in an interesting way because you don't have to be in electric cars to get there. It's we've we've already the, we've already been pushed into SUVs. Right. They're positioned as being more desirable. Regulations have made them because they the the pedestrian whatever they've done to the shape of cars has made them less desirable and feel less roomy than a comparable SUV. And then you've got our chicken tax bullshit that encourages people to buy bigger, heavier, stupider vehicles to use as everyday vehicles. We don't need electric cars. We're already at that. But when everything is that heavy, when everything is over 5,000 pounds yeah. and all the 5,000 to 9,000 pound cars are hitting each other, it's probably going to be, it, so, it might especially be in side impacts. So. Especially when they're going zero to 60 in fucking three seconds. Right. I that, mean, the new the new Hummer EV is like 9,000 pounds. <laughs> you see that article? The battery pack is 2,900 pounds? Yeah. The battery pack. Yeah. I mean, it's a big battery pack. <laughs> yeah, but my Ferrari 328 is 2,820. Right. <laughs> like the whole car. <laughs> What the fuck? Like, it just doesn't. I mean, I, I like the cars are heavier because there's things in them, and right. a lot of those things make us safer. Structure, True. airbags, you know, stuff like that. But some of the other stuff. I mean, it's just going to be bigger battering rams hitting bigger battering rams. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. And not hitting, you know, pedestrians. Hyundai Accents or pedestrians or Mazda Miatas. Yeah. The difference, though, like if two rhinoceroses collide, we all, you know, they shake it off because they're just like fighting over territory. But there's no people inside the rhinoceros getting shaken around. <laughs> you know, like that's the difference. Like the human inside the Hummer that crashes. There are the no other people human. inside rhinoceros. Yeah, it's just there's things inside the vehicle that might fly around. Um, let's go to anonymity. Toyota said future EV models might have a manual transmission. What are your thoughts on possible manual EVs? Uh, incredibly unlikely. I didn't know that Toyota said that. Did you? Know they did that? say that. Yeah. I mean, I, I've I have been in uh, an, an EV with a manual transmission before. It was a converted Porsche. Right. And it did work. Um, it was neat because you couldn't stall it. You know, oh, right. You, yeah. You it's just a, came yeah. to a it's stop. Just, it just is. It just yeah. is. <laughs> and and that was that was kind of cool. And and you don't have you didn't have to like rev match. Um. But I, I just don't. I don't think. It's, it's unnecessary it's because, un because okay, the only reason you're downshifting for corners is so that you're close to the torque peak, right. close to the power peak. And EV is always there. Yeah. And EV is always in the right gear, so to speak, because you're at the torque peak. You're at the, you, know, you have that instantaneous thrust no matter what. So there's, it doesn't really make any sense to me. It might improve like 
some high efficiency, sh- high maybe. speed performance. Maybe you, you know, uh, like a Tesla maxes out at like one thirty, whereas a Taycan with its two speed gearbox can do like one sixty five. Right. Or but it I mean, might make the, it more efficient. Uh, we just tested a Lucid and it went one seventy three. Did you in a fucking yeah. Lucid? Wow. And then the the um, uh, it's got uh, like wheel uh, wheel covers. Uh huh. Those all. Fucking flu. <laughs> <laughs> like throwing stars at a hundred. Did you enjoy the Lucid? I thought it was cool. I thought it was awesome. I thought it was that great. Is such a great cool car. car. It's amazing. It's like almost French. Yeah, exactly. It's like a weird melange of like 1930s, 40s cars, especially yeah. in the back. Yeah. And then kind of weird and French and Citroen-y. And yeah, like if someone said, here's the new DS, you'd be like, okay. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah totally, totally. Yeah. No, it's it's an amazing car. It was um, lovely. We'll have a road test in the next issue. Yeah, the uh, we drove it in a pissing rainstorm in the canyons. And even in the wet, the composure was extraordinary. And yeah. the ride was amazing. Yeah. For a non-air suspension, the ride was wild. It's a, it's a fun car. What Were you on the 21s or were you on the 19s? 21s. In it was a dream world. performance. Okay, so, so was, the eleven hundred horsepower. It was a 11, fucking 11. fastest. Yeah. It, yeah, we ran like a nine second quarter mile in the wet. Right. It was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. I, think, I don't think ours was that quick. I didn't time it, but right. it was whatever it was. Right. It fucking hooked no, and, it, and it, it, went. It, it was great. Um, I don't know about the manual EVs. It's not. It's not that cool to me. I mean, I would play with one, but. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't really know what the what the gain is. It wouldn't be a, a selling point. My EV is in the in the shop right now because it uh, for some reason it stopped it stopped connecting to the app on my phone, the Ford app, which is not a it doesn't keep you from driving or using the car, um, but there is some shit on the app that is like helpful. Like, for instance, the charge monitor when you charge in public places or right. even at home, like just the charge monitor, being able to like remotely lock, unlock or set the temperature if you park it in hot and you go, OK, I'm going to be outside in 10 minutes, you know, whatever. Um, and so they were like the, they couldn't understand why it wouldn't talk to the app. So I had to drop it off and have them play with it for a couple of days. How long have you had that car? About a year. I got an April eighth of twenty one. Okay. So coming up, we've we just I just hit. It's got like eighty nine hundred miles on it. Um, I've had a couple small hiccups, but never anything of real consequence. Like I've never not been able to drive it or not right, been able right. to charge it or anything that's been a real issue like right. there's been a couple times where like carplay won't connect right, right or right. like you know just like just stupid little shit but it's a very very nice car yeah uh it was our ev of the year yeah yeah and consumer reports as well highest rated uh ev F- fuck dude for 750 dollars a month no money down i mean i i cannot imagine a nicer product is that your city car yeah. Oh, okay. It's my wife's car, oh, okay. but like you know, I, she works from home, so like right. I drive it a bunch. So too. you run errands in it and stuff. Yeah, but we just road tripped it to Coronado this past weekend, um, and had to we charged it like in Carlsbad. I have had many many issues with public chargers. Yeah. Like the Electrify America ones are really buggy. They're and super hard. fucking buggy. You can't buggy. always rely on them at the worst possible time. Yeah, yeah, that's the real. The stress isn't the range anxiety because I can do math and the range counter is very accurate. Right. Like uh, that. So it's not a range anxiety. It's a time anxiety. It's what if I get there and this charger's fucked up. Right. Exactly. And that is totally un- unpredictable. Exactly. And that's really been the problem. And I've had like. Like when I had a the account on my Electrify America app, like it wouldn't like sometimes the, the app won't connect to the charger. Okay, fine. So I'll just swipe my credit card, and even though there's a little Amex sticker right there, it's it like, wouldn't read my right. Amex. But it worked on a Visa. Like I, what the fuck? Like right. we have solved the card payment system. Well, like, also like ChargePoint, I never had any issue with ChargePoint chargers. Um, I don't know if you ever used the I think the we used ChargePoint Charge going to Vegas, yeah. and it was fine. Yeah. It was fine. I've never yeah. had an issue with ChargePoint chargers. We have actually we have ChargePoint chargers at the office. And, oh, you do? And they're like, they work you great. You have ChargePoint chargers at your office? Yeah, we have like two Tesla chargers. Oh, really? We have a bunch of chargers. That are yours, chargers. or they just happen to be part of the office well, we, complex? Well, we, we ask them to put them there. Oh, really? Because we anticipate testing a lot of EVs. Oh. And yeah. What, what do they, are they fast? Uh, we they're, don't have a fast charger. Oh, okay. We don't have a fast charger yet, but... Uh, Hopefully that'll be on the horizon. Yeah. So we've got two level twos here, 
and then I'm putting at my new building in Gardena. We're doing four level twos. You, oh, okay. Yeah, you don't have a DC. I looked into it. It must be so much money. It's so much money, and it is so much power. Yeah, it like is. I, I was like, how much more power can it be? It's a and, lot. And my new building, the it this building here is only got 400 amps. Which, considering what we're doing here, it's we have to very creatively use that 400 amps. Right. My new building is 1600 amps. But you need, I th I believe, nine hundred amps to run one DC yeah, charger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking insane the amount of power you actually need. And then the charger itself was like fifty grand, right? Compared to like nine hundred right. for a level exactly. two. Right. And I was like, Ugh, it's uh, fine. I nobody, wanted to. I really to, well, nobody needs that fast charge that quickly unless you're road tripping. I tried to make it a priority. I was like, my new building, we're gonna have a fa we're gonna have a DC we're charger, the best, and, right. and I I was ready. And then I looked into it. I was like, oh, God, are you kidding me? Fuck no. Let right. the let the government subsidize that shit. Exactly. I can't do it. So four level twos. Um, I think that's our show. It feels like our show. Is I think that that's, it? I think that's our show. Yeah. Well, thank you for wow, having Wow, Zach, the split, screen on it, the split screen on this shot is like lined up in a way that makes us look, Tony and I look like we're same siding at the table. It's it's like a real weird. Put your, it's, put your it's arm the, around each that other. That split screen, it like oh, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. kind of strange. Uh, I'm so happy for you and your new job. Although I'm sad, it means you won't live here anymore. I'll be here plenty. I'm sure. There's so much opportunity, and we can't test in the winter in Michigan mm -hmm. reliably. I mean, there was a year where I came out here ten times, and that's when I fell in love with California. And you I'm keep gonna that miss diamond it. medallion, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'll keep it keep in the house too. So um, yeah, that's gonna be cool. But I mean, how nice that you have the big chair in the in it's, the in the corner office now. It's a good feeling. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, are you scary? Like, but yeah, hopeful. are you like um, how do I do this? <laughs> yeah, completely. When I was interviewing, when I was interviewing, one of the people asked me. Um, what are you most worried about? And I was like, all the unknowns. How to run a magazine? No, that's <laughs> not, not, that's, I've, you know, I've been doing that for enough, uh, I've worked with enough people and done that a long enough time. It's more of all the unknowns that are involved in being the EIC. Yeah. So. Are you going to like, are you going to like change the, the look of the book to make it, to make it the Tony uh, We're going to play, years? we're going to play with some stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, you know, well, I mean, right now, like, you know, print, yeah, we can do anything in print. Because there's no real downside. Mm. Um, so we can experiment. We can play with a lot of stuff. And I'm looking forward to that. That's awesome. I can't wait to get my new issues. When is when is the first Tony issue? Do we know? Uh, it'll be the April issue, which we're closing okay. in a couple of weeks. Excellent. So Excellent. that'll have my editor's letter. and um, But then I will be putting a bigger stamp on coming things, hopefully. Cool. Can, Do you, are you going to be personally testing cars anymore? Or are you going to... Occasionally. You, I yeah. mean, there's no, there's no reason that I, I couldn't. Um, but you know, because, if I'm on but a you like that. It's not like yeah, it's fun, and I'm I, yeah, it's fun. And mm. if I'm on a comparison test or something, if I have time to go on a comparison test, that remains to be seen. But we when we're out and testing, I'll you know I'll hook up the gear and test. Cool, that's awesome. So. Editor in chief of Car and Driver, Tony Caroga in the house. Thanks everybody. Have a great weekend. Uh, we will be back. Next week we've got a uh, couple. We got three shows: Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Monday we got Riley Brennan, who is an expert in macro mobility, and you know him, Riley. Yeah, I worked with Riley twenty years ago at Automobile. He's really, really two years ago. At really Automobile, interesting. Yeah, he's, so, great, he's got smart talking guy. about micro mobility, but also commercial EVs and all kind of autonomy. And he all worked kinds of stuff. at Pratt and Miller when they were racing the C five R. So oh, ask really? him about his PR days. Oh, yeah. very interesting. Yeah, if you've got tips for to ask, things to ask about for sure alex roy gave me some oh, cool. some helpers we've got david tracy and jason torchinski they've uh they've got a new project they're doing they're leaving jalopnik and they're doing a thing with bo bachman called auto the autopian autopia 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 not like autotopia no. i think it's the autopian okay i think it's a website about cars in the future and then on wednesday we've got bert kreischer coming in uh hopefully he takes his shirt off uh, it's right, the Autopian. Is that what it's called? The Autopian. That's what it's called, right there. Third result on Google. Get your SEO in line, Torchinsky. <laughs> the Autopian. All right, thanks, Tony. Good to see you. Thanks, man. I'm glad I ate. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, this would have been too. a fucking shitty show. <laughs> All right, bye, everybody.